T-Man will be back on live in no time. Now more of the best of T-Man. Russell Crowe is throwing in the towel, at least for a little while. Crowe says he's going to take an indefinite break from performing to be with his family and his girlfriend back home in Australia. Well, has he done anything since A Beautiful Mind? Anyone knows about? Besides getting trouble? Right. Yeah. <laughs> besides, besides fighting around the world? <laughs> Not that I'm aware of. So he's been on like an indefinite leave for the past year because that movie came out a year ago. To be with his family and his girlfriend back home in Australia. He's taking an indefinite leave to be with his family. Now, to my knowledge, does he have any children? Not, uh, no. no. So he wants to be with his parents. Right. Okay. When you're a grown man. Yes. The age of Russell Crowe. And you take a break to be with your family. Uh -huh. That is just not... Uh, positive as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> not that you shouldn't love your family. Right. But I need to take a break to be with my family. The only reason you should say that as a man over 25, 30 is if you have kids, a wife, whatever. Mm -hmm. Now, he wants to be with his mom and dad. <laughs> this is something that women might opt to do. Right. <laughs> At some point over the next five to ten years, he may say, you know, I'm going to take a break from work to be with my family. Right. <laughs> Come on, pigeon and all. <laughs> it's not healthy as an adult right. to make that kind of statement. <laughs> you should be able to break free from mom and dad. Mm -hmm. Well, they also mentioned the girlfriend. Maybe he's planning on asking her to get married and, and part of this little indefinite leave of absence. Well, and if I felt that was the case, that would be one thing. But I think he wants to be with mommy and daddy. I really think Russell Crowe, right. deep inside, may be a mama's boy. Well, there's nothing too wrong with that, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> nothing too wrong. Yeah. What? Not what? to say you shouldn't love, cherish, spend couple of weeks here and there with mom and dad as an adult. Right. But you should have a life of your own. You should be moving back in with the fam. Right. You think his room is set up like it was when he was little? Yeah. <laughs> He's got his penance up. Right. He's playing the air guitar in his bedroom. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, I, 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 I. Yeah, and I'm not going to disagree that it's a little odd for him to say family when he has no kids and he's not married. Right. Take your mouth off of the nipple at some point. <laughs> all right? Stop suckling. Jimmy Fred Weeman is still suckling on the pitchy breast. Right. Yes? No. Yes! I, I, for almost a year, <laughs> Miss <laughs> Weeman, nephew grew up, so uh, <laughs> spending all day with my family. It's tough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ew, it's microphone tricks. I can't uh, believe oh, you can't relate to that. I can't relate to that? I, I'm surprised you can't. What, that I don't want to live with my with my mom and dad? No, that you don't miss them for, for uh, holiday dinners and uh, seeing them uh, more often than three or four times a year? I honestly don't. <laughs> but see, we all know. <laughs> that, that he... Seeing them three or four times a year, in, and I see them like two or three times a year. Right. Nah, actually, maybe it's more like three or four times a year. is perfect. But perfect. You, but you but talk you... to them, too. Wouldn't want it any more. Right. Wouldn't want it any less. Mm -hmm. Love them. Honor them. Respect them. Right. That's where it is. But it's not like, I know that in the past you've, like, met your parents, like, so you know, to yes. the horse races and things like that. We it's, just met in October at the uh, Breeders' Cup right. in Chicago. But, it was a nice weekend. Right. Couldn't take an extended weekend. Right, but <laughs> See you later. Have a nice life, Mom. it's like he go, that's his, when he goes on vacation, it's let's go back home right. and spend the whole vacation. Well, I bought my, my mom. My parents want to see me, Terry. It's not my thought if your parents don't want to see you. Ah, well, geez. my mother would love to see me, and, and we're, but I Terry do. But Terry has taken her mouth off the nipple. <laughs> I, I bought my understand. parents the house in Florida today right. so that we can all get together. We sure. can congregate. I'll know where they are. Right. <laughs> now I can see them three times a year. I'm good. <laughs> my mom lives 20 minutes away. I see her 10 times a year probably. See? It doesn't make me any less of a child right. who loves his parents to, to say that if I spend an extended period of time, they start making me crazy. <laughs> see, the more time the Weeman can spend with his mom and dad, the more he likes it. And mm -hmm. that's fine. I guess mm -hmm. that's fine. Yeah. But but uh, the Russell Crowe move of moving back in with your family is not healthy. I'm sorry, as an adult. Right. But, and as but Jimmy Fred Women doesn't see that. You think this is as, as a positive thing. Wow, if, if anyone could do that, they should take that opportunity, right? Yeah, and I just know that trip to the airport when my parents take me is so difficult. All right, nobody asked you about the trip <laughs> to the airport. Tell me that he doesn't cry. They all he's... sit there crying, huddled oh, together no. as a family, There's I imagine. no tears, but it's sad. Mm, all right. What if Jimmy Fred's parents just said, you know, this time we'll vacation ourselves? He would be crushed. <laughs> if, it makes, if it makes your life any more balanced, the times we take you to the airport to get you out of town... It's very much of a, a party. And Hotshot's been very nice to take me to the airport huh? in the past. Yes. <laughs> As he drives away, he says, yes, he's right. finally gone. <laughs> Can't get him out of here fast enough. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> what time are you going? I'll drive. <laughs> now, a woman here holding on one of the phone lines, I requested yesterday. Yes. 
And we got a number of calls from people who said they had a picture in a high school yearbook, whatever the case may be, of this woman they're not showing on TV, the woman they're not showing in the newspapers or the media of any kind, because she hasn't been charged yet with any kind of crime. All right, the French but, teacher. Yeah, right? but she wrote notes to this dude in class saying, my husband, it's his last day away right. on a business trip. That's like the hottest letter you can ever get. Right. And uh, <laughs> please come over. And then she wrote him a note, getting him back in class and making excuses for him. Well, she's going to bring down the picture in the yearbook this morning. Isn't that right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and you're no longer in high school, right? No, actually, my daughter had went to a school dance with him. So I have a picture I of see. her and him. Really? I and have the yearbook. But you have a picture of the teacher in question who will keep nameless since I guess she hasn't been charged with anything. Oh, but I just want to see what she looks like. All right. I have the yearbook. She's okay. not that hot. She's not. Oh, even mm. the mom is saying. What did the team man predict, Terry? You did. You did. Did I say I didn't feel this one was that hot? Yes. All right. What time you can you be down here about? How I long? Probably, I could probably be down there by 8.30. And we'll see you then, baby. Okay, great. Yes. Thank you. Are, are, you, are you hot? Oh, am I hot? Yeah. Well, yeah. I'll let you decide that. <laughs> I think I look pretty good. <laughs> see you soon. Better than the teacher. Right. Yeah, probably. Better. If you're calling yourself pretty good. Hey, are you, all of my daughter's friends think I look pretty good. Really? Oh. Are you hotter than the teacher, yes or no? Yes. yes. Oh, my goodness, yes. Good deal. She's like, yes. Hang on. <laughs> will, you write, will you write me a note? <laughs> okay, I'll good. Get you out of class. Good. Come on down. We'll see you in a little bit. Is your husband on a trip? <laughs> are you still married? No, I'm divorced. Oh, oh. That's no fun. All right, hang on. <laughs> I'll give her directions, Jimmy Fred. Wait a minute. Go <laughs> on. Alright. Shall we down about an hour or so, maybe more. Good deal. Yeah, she's gotta get all done up for me. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure. Terry, you gotta get all done up for everyone. <laughs> Uh, Chad, you done up? I'm done up. Okay. Yeah, she's got the eight mile skull cap on. <laughs> that he's been wearing for the last, what, right. two weeks well, or so? Jay, get ready to be saying the same thing about six months from now. I know. I know. <laughs> this will be his daily winter attire. Yes. First, you just turn into a uniform for yes. me. Yes. It's t shirt, <laughs> it's sweatpants, right. it's eight mile skull, skull cap. cap. It's either wash it at the end or throw it away. We want to thank Paramount Pictures uh, yes. <laughs> for adding a new little uh, thingy to the hot shot wardrobe. Nice new addition to the ensemble. Right. <laughs> Please put out a new motion picture soon. <laughs> yeah, I need a new backpack and so a new he shirt. Can, he could add to his spring line. Right. Wait it's till eight mile too. I'm going to be hot. <laughs> right. <laughs> Just add back the uh, braids and you're all in. Yes. These movie companies go out of business. <laughs> Boy, hot shot is. So hot shot's cool. wardrobe is down to nil. <laughs> yeah, I nothing know. left. Yeah. Big trouble. <laughs> What do you have there, Terry? What's going on? We got some news about Liz Hurley and Stephen Bing. Apparently, Stephen Bing is uh, trying to give her some type of support, like uh, money and all that good stuff. Child support. Right. Well, he is acknowledging that yes. there's no denying that he's the father of the child that she is now having suckle on her very ample and fascinating bosom. Right. <laughs> Damien is the young child's name. Now, we hope by age 20, 25, 30, that this child... We'll be able to break free and have a life of his own. Right. <laughs> we hope. That's the goal. Uh-huh. Not that you don't love your, your mom and despise your dad for wronging you. <laughs> right. That's the way it'll be for this child. <laughs> so what's happening between them? But, but Liz is like, she doesn't want a dime, yes. nothing, nil. Well, and she's, she's like, self-supportive, Sorry. and this is out of spite. She doesn't want to make it seem like uh, Stephen Bing has any, uh, if he's not going to love her at all, which I think she would like, actually. She doesn't want him to have any kind of impact in this child's life of any capacity. He doesn't want, she doesn't want him to be able to say, well, I'm paying this much, I should get to see him X, X, X days. Right, well... And, if I and, want to give him an eight-mile skull cap, <laughs> that's my prerogative. And according to the uh, British uh, news source, they say that the courts are now getting involved to where they have to, like, force her to take the money. She has to take it. She has to. They're mm-hmm. like... And she's like, no, I don't want it. But they're like, no, you have to. So your wife won't shut her stupid yap? <laughs> hey, howdy, howdy. How you doing there? Just fine. How are you, T-Man? Well, what's going on, my friend? Well, actually, to be perfectly honest with you, I called you to tell Terry let the kids kiss. Say again? I said, I called you to tell Terry to let the kids kiss. I've been trying to call you let for like weeks now. Let the kids kiss. The man's been on hold for quite some time, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Bringing up a topic from about three weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, dying to say Yes, it. And, and you let the kids kiss, sir? Or, bother or, me none. or you kiss the kids. Oh, <laughs> uh, no, that would be quite wrong. I see. I'm <laughs> glad God. you are able to pick up on that. And uh, where where in the south are you calling from, sir? Actually, I'm in Seattle. Oh. Up Wait. north in Linwood. Mm-hmm. Born and raised here? 
Uh, well, yeah, actually, I'm just using an accent so nobody I know recognizes Oh, okay, oh. because you're such a man in the limelight that as soon as you use your real voice, yeah. thousands upon thousands will be able to identify you. Is that it? No, I just know lots of people I don't want to be bumping into. I see. <laughs> yes. And, hey, uh, you know, yes. I never listened to you this early in the morning. I can't believe it. I got a math test I got to take today, so I've been up all night anyway. Wow, and think about all the harassment you take during that math test. What a distraction it would be if you actually used your real voice. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to listen to you the whole morning while I'm studying. All right. Don't threaten me. Thank you uh, very much, sir, and good luck on that math test. And uh, you don't have a wife, do you? Oh, no. Okay. Well, Never. Then, well, you uh, you aced that test, all right, dude? All right. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Y'all. It was a very convincing accent. Yeah, it was. Yes, it was. You and stick it, with it. If it didn't tell me that it was a phony accent... I wouldn't have believed it. At least he was honest about that there. I mean, I would have believed it. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it was good. Yeah. Either one. I'll take your pick. I could get upset if things could get out of hand. You're listening to the Best of T-Man. The T-Man will be back on live soon. Now more of the Best of T-Man. Now, Guns N' Roses was scheduled to play at Vancouver's GM Place. But as he has been known to do before, lead singer Axl Rose failed to show. A, a similar stick. riot happened in Missouri a decade <laughs> no. ago. They were killing each other last night. <laughs> Crazy. Or whenever this was. Mm-hmm. They were they were riding like uh, WTO style because Axl Rose doesn't show up and they're told to go home. A similar riot happened in... Oh, no, they were told that uh, a guy named Percival Sweetwater was going to fill in as the lead <laughs> singer for Guns N' Roses tonight. The part of Axl Rose right. we played by... Tell him to put his mop down and get on stage. Right. <laughs> a similar riot happened in Missouri a decade ago outside St. Louis when Rose jumped off the stage and attacked a fan. Amazingly, considering the roughing up of the fans tonight in Vancouver and all the pepper spray used, there are no reports of injuries so far. Yeah, whatever. I saw the riot on TV. You know, they're lying. Or people can't talk because they have smashed jaws. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they were killing each other. Crazy. Because he decides, eh, I don't feel like showing up tonight. It's a good movie on HBO here. Right. <laughs> That's what he does, too. It's unbelievable. Right. How frustrating. Get excited about Guns N' Roses. Right. All those individuals that get excited about them finally coming back to town after 10 years or whatever it's been since Guns N' Roses toured. Was it about 10? Yeah, like 10 years. Yeah. Man. And Axel decides get, not to get worked up for six months <laughs> and then let it all out because of the frustration of the announcement. Yeah, Axel Rose could care less about all you. Right. right. <laughs> And decided he'd rather stay home and clip his toenails. <laughs> he like knocking on his dressing room. Which he, yeah, which he hasn't done for ten years, <laughs> yeah. by the way. Hey, you got a show? Nah. Nah. I'm good. Good, 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 good. I don't feel like it. <clears throat> something hurts. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I took a lot of painkillers, but something was hurting a little while back. Don't feel like going on tonight. Yeah. This is why they broke up. He wouldn't go in the studio. He wouldn't go on tour. He's just an idiot. I don't understand why he does this. We have, uh, you can tell that Hotshot is a fan. Yes. Mm -hmm. well, they were a himself. great band. And oh, for, They could have been one of the greatest bands a ever. legendary band. No one's denying that. But Axl Rose. <laughs> they were all right. <laughs> wow, they were very good. They were, they Use were, Your Illusion 1 and 2 and Appetite for Destruction are <laughs> very good albums. <laughs> they were very good. Okay. Yeah, don't question that. Okay? Man. He gets very defensive. You can hear. He's looking for Pasty Day for support. Yes. <laughs> you can hear the true fan in Hotshot come out. And that's nice. It's nice you appreciated Guns N' Roses back in the day. Would you have been part of the rioting uh, little mob there or what? I was in my living room last night. Actually. I was right. smashing stuff up left and right. <laughs> Huh? I just think well, it's frustrating when you go out there. He's a total idiot, man. It's unbelievable. I would be pissed if one of the concerts I was looking forward to, all of a sudden they make an announcement when you're there. It's bad enough when you hear the morning of, oh, yeah, they got Larry and bull crap. Right. They don't feel like coming to town, whatever. Like uh, there was some concert recently that was a big-time concert that was canceled locally and people got pissed, but it was at least they didn't make you go there. Right. All right? That's the thing, is you get there and you're all anticipating right, you're the whole there. Thing. Everyone was there. What do they expect? Right. You've gone through security? It's basically yeah. it's yeah. basically like ringing a big bell and saying, riot now! Right. <laughs> Everybody's boozed up. You snuck your weed in. You're yeah. all set to go. <laughs> what do you expect? You got to... This is what happens when you cancel at the last minute. Mm-hmm. I thought this was the new Axel. He made a change in his <laughs> That's life. That's the funny part. Is he says it is. <laughs> the new Axel. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> Same schmuck. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> What else? What else is going on in the world? Now, we have a lot of listeners uh, in Vancouver that yeah. email all the time. Mm -hmm. Try to find some way. If I could convince the, the powers that be at the syndication company to put us on on a Vancouver station. Yes. 
What can I do here? <laughs> Listen through static. If uh, I, I'm very happy you do. That's nice. Yeah. I get emails all the time. T-Man, I, I have to listen to my car or else I get too much static in my house. Right. And they're very committed to that. So, so. I'm sitting in my garage and <laughs> a couple of my friends got accused of committing suicide or attempted. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, I guess uh, I can send them a note. <laughs> Excuse me. We've had many requests. <laughs> yes. Go up to Vancouver and strong arm some station to put us on. Right. <laughs> I understand it. Even through the static, even though there's no station in Vancouver that broadcasts us, mm -hmm. I was told by someone up there that we actually have like a two share in Vancouver. Really? <laughs> and we're not on it. <laughs> Seriously. And we're not on any of the stations there. Yeah. People listen through the static. I think somebody want to pick it up. And there are a lot of hotties in, uh, in British Columbia. Yeah. So they Yes, said. there are. There are a lot of breezes up there. So I'm, yeah, I'm every bit behind you in the notion of putting us on in Vancouver. Right. There's got to be some station that recognizes we have a two-share up there, and if we were actually on a station in Vancouver, we'd go immediately to, like, to an 8, 9, 10. There you go. Go stand outside a station somewhere, people, and just... Very say, important to me that we are on in a lot of cities that have big-time brazies. Okay. <laughs> so we can go visit and be fun, right? Yes. Yeah. We always visit. Yes. Right. Yeah. That's one thing you've learned through the years. <laughs> Big visitors. At least we're not like Axl Rose. Yeah. Make promises that are unkept. Absolutely. Yeah. What else is going on? Interesting little story going on here about uh, Polo Ralph Lauren, the whole company. Oh, yeah. Not only can the Vancouver people not hear us clearly, they have to listen to static, and they do, mm -hmm. but they can't call because the 800 number that we have doesn't work for them. That's another complaint. Oh, And really? yet they're pretty damn loyal up there with the amount of email emails I get. So something's got to be done. Oh, my goodness. Maybe I actually will talk to some of the people that, uh, I guess, run the show here. There you go. What are their names? Yeah, who was that again? <laughs> right. <laughs> what? Let's see. We even... No, no. <laughs> what do you got? I was telling you about uh, a Polo Ralph Lauren uh, store employee who has filed a lawsuit against the company claiming that she's been forced to purchase and wear only Polo gear um, at work. Yeah, that is really interesting. That happens with a lot of companies. Yes. You work for the company, and then you're told you have to wear their gear. Yes. But if that's the case, give it to me. Don't make me pay for it, so I have to have one for every day that I work. Right. Otherwise, I'm losing money on the job. Mm -hmm. And she, she's... The Gap, I'm sure a lot of companies like that, or the guest store, you only see them wearing guest yes. apparel. Mm -hmm. Tommy. Everybody. And you know that they're not just giving out clothes to all their employees. Right. So you're already in the hole... Like 700 before you even get started on day one, <laughs> just so you can work there. I know. Doesn't make much sense. <laughs> she says she's logged more than $35,000 in polo purchases, and she only gets like $22,000. Uh, now, 35000 is a little extreme. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to wear all the clothes on the right. same day. At the same time, you right? <laughs> buy out the store to keep your job. Every hour you change outfits. <laughs> when I was working at the Ponderosa, Terry, the steakhouse, yes, extraordinaire. Of course. You'd think they'd give me a free lunch after eight hours of work. Right. No. No way. <laughs> I didn't even get a discount. See, that's well, Maybe thing. I did get a discount, but they made you pay, and okay. the discount was still too much for me back then. Right. Well, that was my... That I was wondering. I thought that... For a steak this thin. Yeah. <laughs> that you could see through. <laughs> I thought at least at these retail, you know, stores that you got some kind of discount, but it doesn't even sound like you get a discount. You have to... She's suing, claiming that uh, they have put her in a bad financial situation because they're forcing her to wear the gear... Right. ...if she wants to work. Yes. Well, she could always get another job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> True. But, so I don't know how much merit her case has, but it is kind of unfortunate, but it makes, it also makes sense. You don't want to, some mm -hmm. polo store employee wearing Nautica. Right. right. And if the label yeah. can definitely be seen, you know, some person comes into the store, oh, where'd you get that shirt? Right. You know. Well, I didn't buy it here. Yeah. <laughs> Different store in the mall. Yeah, it's a lot more reasonable, too. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't help with sales. You're out of the air. Hey, T-Man. Yes. In Federal Way? Yes. Like at South Center Mall, if you work at... Yeah, I'll just rip on everybody <laughs> of every uh, retail outlet. Yes, what, what about your... St where do you work? I used to work at Abercrombie okay. in South Center Mall. Yes. You get maybe like a 30% discount. Oh, and you right. can't wear clothes like after the season's out of them. Wow, you have to wear what's in season? Wow. <laughs> And you waste a lot of money. Cause so when you hear that uh, that climax or where the Jets song, Seasons Change, you go, change the, change the station! <laughs> yeah, yeah. It haunts you, does it? Yeah. Wow. So you need a whole new line mm. every uh, few months. 
Basically, yeah. And you can't wear something that was last season either. Like if it's fall and you actually worked a full year and fall comes around again, you can't wear what you wore last year. You have to wear what's in now. Exactly. So it does cost. It costs a lot. But their argument could be, hey, you need clothes anyway and you're getting the in stuff. <laughs> right. <laughs> For cheaper than everybody else. Heaven knows everyone's still wearing flannels. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so arguments can be made on both sides. Of course, yes. That's why it's better just to work at Hot Dog on a Stick. Same uniform every day, any season. Yeah, and then, of course, they put you on that stick half the day. <laughs> and after it look like you like it. In your heart, you know he's right. The T-Man Show. And we'll be back on live, well, sometime later. Now well, more Bell's of the best able to find humor in her personal and legal problems. The comedian, appearing this weekend at an Actors and Others for Animals fundraiser, will regain custody of her three adoptive children right. after 17 months apart. How about that, huh? Interesting. Very They've been apart 17 months already? Yeah. Not enough. It's amazing how everyone was outraged with Paula Poundstone just mm -hmm. what seemed like a short time ago. Now, all right, let her kids go back with her. What the hell? Who gives a crap when it really comes <laughs> yeah, down to right. it? Yeah, this probably... Madeline Too Good who looked around, made sure no one was watching, and then beat the crap out of her daughter in the backseat of her minivan. Mm -hmm. They're saying she's going to get her daughter back. Mm -hmm. People, short-term memories can be very, very dangerous. Yeah. I wonder, when things start blowing over, yeah, she'll be on her best behavior for the first year, Madeline Too Good. but let's see what happens a couple of years down the road when she has a little fit of rage. Well, I'm sure she, that she's probably on probation and they get, you know, surprise visits. Fine, from... and what is that going to mean if she actually kills this daughter in a fit of anger? Because she beats her, so there have been children yes. who have died at the hand of their parents' rage. Mm -hmm. Fine. The blood's on all your hands and not mine, because I'm saying so right now. <laughs> I wouldn't give that daughter back to her at any time. <laughs> Last year, she pled no contest to felony child endangerment. The charges stem from her admission to driving while intoxicated with her kids in the car. Nice. Along with a five-year probation, Poundstone underwent a six-month drug and alcohol rehab program. Oh. Two foster children were permanently removed from her home. Now she's all bad. After three years of sharing the sofa with Barbara, Meredith, Star, and Joy, right. Lisa Ling has decided to call it quits at The View. I have had the most unbelievable three years working with the most incredible women who... Have become such oh, shut your ass. <laughs> Man, alive. Will you stop it? Lisa Ling. Yes. She's leaving for the what? She's... The National Geographic Network? Did I hear that right? Mm -hmm. That cannot be a step up in your career. No. I'm sorry. The View, which is a very popular show, watched by lots and lots of people, mm -hmm. is not uh, beneath going to be the host of the National Geographic Network, which is watched by a couple of guys with fly nets. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I don't even think I get that, by the way. I think I, I think we get it. You just go, you just go over it, unless there's a cheetah about to jump on some gazelle. <laughs> yeah, some gazelle. That's the only time you stop for five minutes. There's two chimpanzees having sex. All right. That's the only time I stop. <laughs> you don't stop on that channel. You can't. It's not interesting to you to know that an ant can carry whatever, however Six many times. Six times its body weight, weight Yes. Well, I hear you can't turn those. <laughs> uh, no. And Lisa Ling doing a little of the documentary uh, announcing on the program is, is not going to get me to stop either. Okay. And I cannot believe this is a good move for her career. As a matter of fact, it only, to me, reeks of her being pushed out of the view. Yeah, when You stop. weren't bringing anything to the table. <laughs> and that's that. I can't imagine it pays more. Probably not, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe she doesn't like sharing the income of uh, what's part of the pie with Barbara Wawa. <laughs> She's jealous of the one who's on uh, Millionaire now. Ah. She wants to go out on her own. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, so she yes. goes. <laughs> National Geographic. She's going to ask the uh, cheetah some very tough <laughs> multiple choice questions. <laughs> right. Why did you attack that gazelle? They're on the air. Hello. Hello. Yes, hi. Hi. I, T Man, I've been worrying about this since Saturday. And I needed your help on um And you've something. made it through the past few days without me, but now here I, you are. I know, and here I am. Yes. How are you? Who's this? My name is Tina. Tana. I'm calling from Tacoma. Okay, Tina from Tacoma. What's on your mind, love? Okay. I um I have been celibate for two and a half years. Okay, hang on please. Oh, yeah. stop now. <laughs> okay, no, go ahead. And um 
I had two a and a half friend. years. There's been no sexual uh, intercourse of any kind in your intimacy. No. I understand. Okay, now uh, you are a single woman or what? I'm a single woman. You're I'm a single woman. And how I'm old divorced. are you? Can you give me a ballpark? I'm 35. 35. In your sexual prime, a lot of people tend to say for a woman, is uh, around that age. 33 to 37, some go as high as to say. Yeah, but I think I had a slow period after having a child. Mm -hmm. I, I think it kind of slowed And you're a divorcee, me. so you hate all men in all likelihood. Oh, that is not <laughs> no, always I true. I don't hate all men. You but love I men. Have See, man, I have been looking for a quality man. Oh, jeez. Yes. And well, yeah. And there Very is difficult. <laughs> The hunts don't even get that hard on the National Geographic <laughs> Network. Yeah. Uh -huh. So you, you've been looking for a quality man, and uh, two and a half years later, you just threw your hands up and surrendered to a non-quality guy to have sex with. Is that fair to say or no? Well, this guy, I, I thought he was quality. We had been dating for 10 months. So a hunt for two and a half years to find a quality man. You obviously did your homework to to look far and wide, you uh -huh. settle on one guy that you decide is quality after 10 months. You finally give him a little sex. I give him a little sex. And where are we now? And it was terrible. Oh, jeez! <laughs> <laughs> Could after it be waiting you... two and a half years, I was so disappointed. And you remember wow. how it used to feel back in the day. Is that correct? Yes. And back, yes. back in the day, you recall it being uh, rather pleasurable experience a pleasurable experience with this like that. and you like that and i like that literally and figuratively Terry. <laughs> yeah. yes but and she was not she was not satisfied with uh this man's abilities now after two and a half years uh -huh. one may tend to say from a medical standpoint that maybe there's been a little bit of uh well, changes sure. in that in certain areas that may need to be relubed or whatever the case may be, <laughs> and second, third, fourth time around may get better and better. Right. She's right. been out. So, she's been out of the loop so long. One can say, well, the first time would be spectacular. Another school of thought may be, well, it would be so awkward and right. and and who knows what that you have to give it a second third fourth chance right do you think it has anything to do with the guy just not being good or is it definitely it very well could it very well could think, be a guy I, I don't think he's had that much experience sexual -wise. well you shouldn't pick 14 year olds <laughs> <laughs> but the last time i mean prior to this this uh, this little incident the this last sexual experience before you went on your little two and a half year hiatus, right? Uh -huh. What was the? Were you sleeping with somebody on a regular basis, or had you just? No, the, la the last man I slept with was my husband. So you and took he a was very good two and a half year buffer from your husband to now this guy who's horrible. Well, your husband, even though I'm sure you didn't uh, have the marriage fall apart because the sex wasn't satisfactory in your mind. No. You had other reasons for for breaking things off, and uh, now you may just be realizing that uh, your husband's skills were even better than you imagined. They are. I, and now that I think about it, I'm like, God, mm -hmm. his skills were really great. Uh-huh. <laughs> so you may have been giving him a little more leeway had you known that back two and a half years ago, that this was a guy that was better than the average by far, and those guys deserve a little more slack. <laughs> I'm yeah, getting I'm no slack in my life. I worked a little harder. Uh -huh. <laughs> are you still in contact with your ex-husband? Uh, yes, we are, because we have children together. Uh, but you, you don't have, like, free spin cards you could use just oh, to see no. how he would do for you after two and a half years. He would do me if I want if I let him. Okay, well maybe. <laughs> but but maybe we go one more lap. Of, maybe just for science, Terry. <laughs> maybe for science, she goes one lap around the track with her husband for old times' sake, her ex-husband, just to see if he's as good as she remembers. If uh, maybe that will give her a good indication of where she personally and biologically stands right now in uh, her sexual life. But if she does that, there's always that risk of opening those emotional wounds once again. Ah, emotion, some emotion. <laughs> I think, so... after, no, after two and a half years, she's ready for one lap around the track and not having it uh, affect her emotionally. And she'll go in with the mindset, I'm not going to let this become anything more than a one-time, one-hour max deal. 
And that way, if this guy, like the ex-husband is spectacular, uh -huh. then she'll know then that she this guy sucks. And right. maybe if that's the case, and sex is a big uh, factor, which is it is in a lot of people's lives and should be to, to some degree, mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, obviously some quantity of a large degree, then she should move on perhaps to somebody else. But all otherwise... No, I, I mean, everything else is good. I mean, he's See, and that's good the thing. Person. I don't think he, she's really right. being fair, because after two and a half years, she, she had nobody else Absolutely. besides this guy. If so everything else changed checks out with this new guy. You might want to give him uh, more chances right. to, to make it happen, all right? I mean, yes, you've been on the bench for two and a half years. You take up your warm-up suit, you might be a little stiff, you and, know what I'm saying? Well, and the other thing, too, is you <laughs> might have to realize that, that because you've been on the bench for two and a half years, that maybe your skills are a little rusty, so... You know, getting in the groove. No, I don't. I don't think so because I I have good skills. <laughs> sex, sex but it's been even like, if you like, have. I mean, even you Michael. Oh, geez. Michael Jordan, the greatest athlete of all time, in my opinion. When he took a hiatus, even though he was still active in other areas of his life, baseball, whatever, he came uh -huh. back a little stiff mm -hmm. until he worked things out. Right. So you could be the greatest lover in the history of women, come off the bench after two and a half years, and have to shake it out a little bit. You know what I'm saying, baby? Plus, this well, is your know. first time. Well, to me, I'm not like you know oral sex. He oh, was just, biting. I, he was Okay. Biting. All right, all right, all right. But did Here's, you say anything? Did you say, oh, wait a minute, I don't like that? Yeah, you may want to say, stop abiding. Right. <laughs> yeah, all right, here's what you do. That's, that's give, what I'm saying. When you make making love to somebody, you giving them hints about okay. what you like. Give him another and shot. Give him another. And he was ignoring okay. it. <laughs> give him another shot this weekend. Let him have a little bit more direction. And then if he sucks again... I suggest the one lap around the track with oh. the ex-husband, Terry, just because you're an emotional wreck. Doesn't mean everyone <laughs> I just else is. Think, I, I mean, but why go backwards is my whole thing. Even though, I'm yes, saying, I'm sure it was great. But, the, see, man, after two and a half years, I would like some good things. Okay. I, like I understand, and you and you deserve that. The ruckus. You, you deserve to be brought the ruckus. And maybe right. this guy, after he, one try, does not a whole, right. uh, you cannot size up his whole abilities. Right. All right? So give him a second chance. Chance. Everyone in the world is entitled to a second chance. Some people even a third. Maybe this guy is worthy of even a third. Give him a second chance, and you call us back and let us know if he still sucks. Okay. All Wait, right, do you love? see him just on okay. the weekends, or is it like during the week? Or <laughs> and if that well, this was on a Saturday night, we had the. Um... X-rated movies on. Wow. <laughs> so, all so if it if you call me back and tell us he still sucks, then me and Hotshot and my whole fleet of people will come over and run a train on you. You'll never know what hit you. <laughs> all right? There you go. Lots of quality sucks. You won't know where it sucks then. <laughs> You'll be bitten from every angle. You won't know where it's coming from. The T-Man. Just when I think you couldn't possibly be any dumber. Q93. Returning to Q. You're listening to the best of T Man. The T Man will be back on live in no time. Now, more of the best of T Man. <laughs> I don't pretend like now the mics are on, oh, you're all clean. It's a very nasty thing, Terry. Very sexually nasty. And we were very offended and don't feel we could start the day that way. And okay. Good night, everyone. You can expect a memo later. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Love memos. You'll have to be pulled aside by someone to tell you to curb your. Your little appetite there that apparently wasn't quenched last night. Oh, boy. Are you okay? I'm fine. Oh, goody. <laughs> Jeez. Well. It usually doesn't start in this early. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> well, good morning. Hi. It's nice to see you. Well, thank you and you as well. And everything going well in your life? Very good. Okay. <laughs> How about you? Well, you could look forward. We couldn't wait with the uh, very fascinating response the uh, large quantity of women that want to uh, throw their hat in the ring to be the bitchler. Yes. Well, today's the day we'll start being a couple of ladies. Really? Yeah, we can't good. put it off. Yay. We gotta find a good bitchler. And if I don't, I don't care how many women apply. Mm -hmm. If I don't, I don't. Right. I'm not gonna force a bitchler <laughs> on the listening audience out there. I can't do that. Right. Well, gotta be a quality, a bitchler. <laughs> the bitchler. Starring the Bitchler. Did we find a quality bachelor? We did. We found a big guy, very successful, very available, very interesting, very much desired by the women, right? And very much the bachelor. Did we let any ladies down no. when we found the bachelor? Did no. we look hard for the bachelor? We did. And the same will happen here. The Bachelor. <laughs> Starring 
The Bachelor. <laughs> and of course, there'll also be uh, something else of interest happening later this morning. Oh, good. You may want to stay tuned for this. The Milkler. <laughs> Starring The Milkler. The Milkler? Now, can you figure out what the Milkler is, Terry? You have an idea, don't you? I have an idea. Okay. <laughs> I can't well, wait for those that who, one. those who weren't listening a couple of days ago, well, you'll have to figure it out yourself. Those who did, you may have an idea. We just use that song for every little theme now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. The Terrier. Right. That's you, Terry. I guess so. Yes. Next year, Boob Campler. Yes. <laughs> In your heart, you know he's right. The T-Man Show. Low, low, low and up. At 7, 2, 4, and 8. Yeah. You're listening to The T-Man Show on Seattle's number one hit music station. Cube 93. Well, the key to spicing up your sex life may start at the grocery store. Okay. Dietitians say the right diet can rev up your sex drive. No, that's not where I thought it was going to go, Terry. I thought just like <laughs> hitting on people in the frozen food section. Right. <laughs> really either get you hooked up or get you going from where you go home to the actual person you're with. May sure. start at the grocery store. Dietitians say the right diet can rev up your sex drive. Yes. The experts say seafood, shellfish, and steamed food all raise the libido. Wow. Honey contains a mineral that's supposed to boost the sex drive. Honey. So say blueberries, red pepper, right. and eggs contain ingredients. Uh, this is quite a salad. For a healthier sex life. Wow. We may have changed your grocery shopping habits. Mm, you know, we, you have. Mm -hmm. Neat <laughs> I'm going to change my whole list now. <laughs> blueberries it is. There you go. Shellfish. Right. Eggs and stuff. Yes. The, the crab blueberry scramble. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Possibilities are endless here. Don't forget to put a dash of honey oh, in there. Oh, wow. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to give you the information, <laughs> yes. Terry, that you need to know about, uh, yes, today is the day that the process begins for coming up with who the actual Bitchler is going to be. The Bitchler. Starring The Bitchler. We will have a star. 24 to about... 36 hours, Terry. All righty, then. And it may be star. The voting process is seconds away, even though I think people are already jumping online voting already. <laughs> You're not supposed to be voting yet. The actual polls aren't exactly open yet, but if you want to vote already, I guess it's up there, so go ahead. <laughs> but the big unveiling, the big launching of uh, the final four has to be put into dramatic context, Terry, and we'll do that in a couple of seconds. Who are your four finalists? I think I already said yesterday, but anyway, now the actual voting can take place. Now we can start tallying people's thoughts, impressions, ideas, who they want to have be the Bachelor. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Until that uh, moment comes, uh -huh. in just a few, Terry, why don't you give us a couple of things on your pile? Go ahead. All right, USA Today is reporting that Phil Donahue is most likely to exit stage left. NBC News executives are apparently under pressure from uh, corporate owner General Electric to improve ratings, and they're going to likely to cancel his show by year's end. He has a talk show? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> mm. he had a cooking show for about a year. <laughs> wow. He was even the subject of a Saturday Night Live parody. Yes. Apparently. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not very good. Not good. When, you're, when, you're, when your own network is making fun of you. Yeah. <laughs> yes. you got to be careful there. <laughs> Not the best thing in the world there, because MSNBC and NBC, I would think, are tied together somehow. <laughs> right. If they're doing a skit about how, how bad things are going, not uh, very good handwriting on the wall for, uh, is the call there? Not much time. Hide it here. Right. <laughs> All right. Well, the second time around, Phil Donahue has not been a major success, obviously. Right. First time through the TV circuit, he was uh, a juggernaut. Yeah. He's the pioneer. And now to be told that, well, you suck now, Phil. <laughs> it's got to be a little bruising to the white-haired ego. MSNBC, it says here, averaging 392,000 viewers in prime time and is a ratings embarrassment for GE. That's what they're saying. Fox Channel uh, draws 1.5 million viewers and CNN draws 983,000. So that's 000. all O'Reilly gets. He's the big guy in that time slot. And all the amount of people that watch him are 1.5 million? 
Mm-hmm. Well, there's a lot of competition. There's a lot of channels. they got the uh, National Geographic channel to worry about. <laughs> yeah. All right, what else? What else? So Donahue is pretty much done, yeah. although it's not been signed, sealed, and delivered yet. Go ahead. What else? Also, Palace Insiders are flapping their gums about uh, Prince Charles and his little spoiled ways. Prince cool. Charles. Yes. He has a tendency to be a little spoiled, Terry? Yes, the dad. <laughs> well, if there's going to be one person spoiled in the world, it wouldn't be a shock. If it would be Prince Charles. What uh, are they indicating? Are they giving any uh, yeah. details? Or yeah. What are they saying? They're saying that he actually has somebody squeeze his toothpaste out for him <laughs> on his toothbrush. And if cool. you could make that happen, you would too. No, come on. No. No. Uh-huh, you uh-huh. can do it. We, also- we saw that at the beginning of Coming to America. <laughs> Does he have wipers? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. All they right. also claim that he like changes uh, five times a day his clothing five times a day and just instead of hanging it back up himself he just leaves it all laying around for his servants to and pick would, up after So he throws him. his clothes on the floor. Yeah, pretty so much. So you would expect uh, Prince Charles to iron, like with his hands iron out the creases and put it on the hanger? Why Is not? that what you want? I mean, you're standing in so, front of your closet you take it off you look at yourself you go, right. oh, I don't take, like it. What's on? He's Prince Charles, oh, all right? Whatever, Prince. Now, you're saying this and yes, even I cannot say it doesn't incite me to some degree to hear about this kind of behavior throwing the clothes on the floor. Do you start rooting for him to, like Enron, just go belly up? <laughs> yes. Like in the movie Arthur back in the day, that he just sits on the side of the road with a squeegee having to get a real uh, type of income? Is that what you start rooting for when you hear this yeah, stuff? Yeah, I think so. Mm-hmm. I think so. With so many people who are not as, you know, privileged as him. Right. Well, he's got all the, you know, he's got all these people working for him. They have to do something. Well, why shouldn't we be so privileged? Why shouldn't your fiancé start uh, not taking the toothpaste and putting it on the toothbrush for you, Terry? <laughs> why shouldn't I right now call Andrew and demand? Demand that you start putting the toothpaste on the toothbrush for me. <laughs> she would slam down the phone on you and say, forget it. Come on now. <laughs> she wouldn't dare. Oh. <laughs> but right. I don't think I should try. <laughs> right. <laughs> not good. She's been to throw it at you. Right. Right. Yeah. Think of it. Yes. I'm sure uh, Stephen's wife is not doing that for him and mm-hmm. vice versa. Stephen, if anything, is doing it for him. <laughs> yeah, it's probably true. <laughs> yeah. Is this enough? I put the right amount on for you, didn't I? Didn't I? <laughs> Yeah. He's still Charlie from the block, though. Don't worry about him. <laughs> Charlie from whatever. Who's Charlie? Prince, prince Charles. Charles. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> We're talking about the prince again. Very good. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Why do you shamelessly waste my time like this? Oh, no. 93. Let me tell you this. The emails are rolling in for uh, dudes out there who are being nominated by ladies, as we stipulated... To come and uh, meet the bitchler, whoever she may turn out to be, which is where we are right now. Very good. Who will she turn out to be? Mm-hmm. Who will be the bitchler? Well, you could go to www.thetmanshow.com right now and see who the four finalists are. And not only that, you can click on their picture, get a bigger picture, flash to your face. <laughs> and then you can see a little bio on each of the four ladies. Now, the bio consists of uh, little bits of information about their lives, as sure. a good bio would. And it also gives a little bit of an indication of what they may or may not have done here in the studio when they applied to be The Bachelor. Okay. Now, as I was talking about, mm-hmm. these emails that are streaming on in from guys that, uh, through women that are close to them, want to meet The Bachelor. We are getting emails from people as far away as New York. Oh, cool. Who are through the women who are writing, yeah. indicating that they want to fly in to meet the bitch. Is that ridiculous? That is neat. Come That's on. really cool. Oh, that's I think reporters cool. are ridiculous. Is. Well, if you can't find somebody there, then maybe this right. is the perfect place. In New York, they don't have enough bitchlers? Wow. Well. <laughs> is that what you're telling me? <laughs> Let me see some of these emails. Should I read a couple here? Yeah, dear team man, I want to nominate my friend slash ex-boyfriend, Pat. <laughs> ex-boyfriend? <laughs> He's still a friend, very Good. mature. He would be perfect to get together with the bitchler. He's a stable, good-looking, fun-loving guy. Oh. With a job that requires a lot of responsibility. Well, hot dog vendor does, too. I mean, <laughs> But what makes him most eligible to date the bitchler is his skills in life. He's a boxer on the side. He and goes on and on with all the things he can do. Wow, she's really impressed. Why'd she let him go, one would wonder. <laughs> right. 
Ah, he is coming, and dun, 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 and that's very nice. He hit me. That was the only problem. Oh. <laughs> Use me as a punch. Yeah, that is the boxer in him. Ah, uh, dear team, my name is Lindsay. I want to nominate my good friend Anthony. I have known him for 14 years. He's a good man. He just got out of a three and a half year relationship, but she cheated on him. He was going to marry her. They were engaged. I'm glad he found out. He's 5'9", 170 pounds, a little short. Good looking. On the wealthier side, a very sweet a guy. Oh, nice. Come on, 5'9 guys are never wealthy, are they? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that short person's complex can take you a long way. Is that right? <laughs> Is 5'9 short enough to qualify for a short person complex? That's right on the border. I think uh, maybe it's above the border. I don't I know if you so, have yeah. the classic short person's complex of 5'9. I think 5'7 and below. Right. Is your classic. You should raise your hand at this point there, Jimmy Fred. Short <laughs> person's complex. I'm uh, pretty sure they can put up with those bitches because uh, he's put up with me for so long and I've been wanting Tim to meet a real good girl for some time, sign Lindsay J. Oh, Lindsay mm. J. So nice. Yes. Now, here's the thing. Yes. A lot of uh, men are emailing us saying, T-Man, I have been hearing about the bitch for a week or so now. Right. I got really excited. I want to meet the bitchler. I don't have anyone I can go begging to, and I don't want to, for that matter, that's going to write in and uh, nominate me. So what the hell? What's the deal? I'm getting a lot of those emails. I'm a quality guy. Here's my picture, and I'm sending them all to gay phone operator. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and they're very, a lot of guys in the listening audience are kind of outraged that we put a stipulation that you have to be nominated by a woman. I asked my sister. She said no. Stuff like that. Uh-huh. Guys can't even get their sisters to nominate them. <laughs> so I'm starting to wonder. Well, let's, let's, you know what? Let's deal with finding out who the bitcher is actually going to be. And that's what today is all about. Okay. That is what the ceremony of today will be. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is your day to be one man, one woman, one vote. Jump on the internet. Go to www.thetmanshow.com. Look at their pictures, read their bios, reflect as to when they were in the studio and how much you like them, and you can decide amongst yourselves who the most appropriate bitchler is. But let's meet some of the contestants. <laughs> They're on the phone line, Terry. I love Good. it. Yes. <laughs> this is great. And one already complaining. One already complaining? About her bio. She's yeah. not happy with the way we phrased... The words that corresponds with her picture. Guess who that may be? Can I guess? Oh, God. Yes, Stephen, go ahead and guess. Well, uh, through a history of uh, complaining with the program, I'm going to guess Star. That's right! <laughs> <laughs> that would be guess. a big yes. What's your problem, Star? There's just a couple things. First of all, I'm 5'4", I'm not 5'3". Oh, you're 5'4", I'm sorry. All those people that were voting like, oh, i got to change my vote, she's 5'4". <laughs> yeah, so much hotter. No, I, was about to vote for, I was about to vote for somebody else, but now that I know she's an inch taller, i got to vote so for Star. Yeah, Star. Well, you also make me sound like this gold digger person because you say I have sex with high-profile people and you also make me sound like a slut, and right. I'm not. All right, easy. No one's making you sound like a slut. You have sex with high-profile people. To me, that is seen in a lot of people's circles. That is an accomplishment. All right, you can pull. Yeah, you can pull. Why are you feeling... Not, and only one, not why a bunch of them. Why are you feeling so insecure? Why are you feeling... Because I lost my 43% lead this morning, and now it's down to, like, 32. Well, the voting, <laughs> the voting in all earnest has not really taken hold yet. We haven't even really sounded the gun. So the people who are getting their votes in so far. I'm sure they're not many. And, uh, yes, they'll count, but it's not officially underway as of yet. Terry will shoot off the gun. Yeah. <laughs> what does is, what is her bio say, Weeman? Bitchler number four star, 20 years old, five feet three inches tall, has no. Can you make it sound a little bit more exciting? I know. Do you have any flair in your in your person anymore? <laughs> Probably not. Go ahead, read with a little enthusiasm. Go ahead. Bitchler number four yeah! star, 20 years old, five feet three inches tall, has no friends but her mom because of her nasty attitude. See, his problem is he's focused on the short person's complex. <laughs> <laughs> friends too. Which took. Your mom told us when you were in the studio. She even said on the air that you yes. have no friends. Mm -hmm. So what are we supposed to do? Yes, yeah, she did. That's what she said. Now, what? Read it again from the beginning. 
with that enthusiasm Fischler that makes you seem like you're six foot one. Go ahead. Fischler number four star. Yeah! 20 years old, five feet, three inches tall. Has no friends but her mom because of her nasty attitude. Has had sex with some high profile men, i.e. Seattle Mariners, Microsoft executives, and radio personalities, not us. <laughs> Earned her way into the finals nice by playing sex over glass with Star's mom. Now what's your... Hey, what is that? I dated people. I didn't just have sex with them. Star. <laughs> Come on. So you don't put out is what yeah, you're saying? Yeah, let's get to the nuts yeah, and no, bolts I'm just of a class, it, okay? I'm a classy bitch. I know what okay. I'm doing. I know what I want. And I choose the people are, I have sex are with. You, are are you trying to indicate that you make guys wait over, what, two dates? Come on. It doesn't matter. I choose who I have sex with. That's fine. You choose. No one's saying that No one's saying that you get duped into sex every time. We are. <laughs> Right. That's not what it says. It, it sounds like I'm a gold digger, you know oh, what, who's going to... You're ruining your chances here, by the way. Star, you, have money. Stephen is suggesting that you may be hurting your chances to get votes with this whiny, but yet bitchy type stance on your own freaking bio. Well, <laughs> you're suggesting that she does a different... I just have an attitude. I'm not just a bitter bitch over some man. If you're not That's happy with your way. own life, don't blame us! <laughs> yeah, Fine. And if you couldn't stretch yourself out to 5'4", don't come on whining to us. <laughs> we measured you out at 5'3". You didn't even, fine. You didn't even measure me. Oh, yes, we did. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I never when I go down there anyway. Maybe you weren't at aware. Least five inches. But we measured. <laughs> All right. Okay. Now, would you like to give anyone out there some kind of word of in advice as to why they need to choose you over all the other finalists? Maybe you're waking up this morning, you're seeing the other three ladies who are the finalists, and you're oh, a little concerned. Yeah, right. Maybe you're no, little... actually, I sent Jimmy a picture yesterday of my body so people could see a body shot because you can only see my face in my picture, yeah, but... and he wouldn't put it up there because he said it wouldn't be fair. That's because we think but we saw I that. the bangiest oh, just... body out of Bang all the girls. We believe we saw that picture in Glamour magazine about last month. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a yeah. problem. Your, your head was not attached to the body. <laughs> Superimposed. All right, yeah. anyone can take a picture of someone's body and send it on the Internet and say it's them. Well, I have the series from that night that those photos were taken well, listen, on my CD. No one's gonna, we're not going to put a picture up. We only put one picture for each finalist. And we're not going to put a picture up that doesn't have your face. All right? <laughs> as much as you may desire that to be the case. That's what you want. <laughs> Is that what you want? You don't want a picture of your face up there? Oh, boy. Well, I want both of them up That's there. Funny. Well, no. We only put one picture up, Star. All right? One picture should be all that's needed if you are a hot-ass woman who has the attitude of the bitchler. And that's what we were looking for right. from the start. Maybe you're waking up this morning and starting to realize you're not that woman. I don't know. Are Whatever. you that woman? Are you that woman? I am, and I, I already am because I have the leading votes, and it just takes a little bit of time that everybody's going to be voting for me, I hope. She's winning right now, women? Uh, she's tied for the lead the last I checked. Mm -hmm. Oh, tied, star. <laughs> Well, that could go, that could change That's in a okay. big hurry. Sure everybody Actually, I just refreshed. She's no longer in the lead. Oh! <laughs> she's in third place. He loves telling her that. It's something tells me. She said she's, she's got to wait for everyone she knows to wake up. Yeah. She's got the whole pool tainted. Honestly, Star, I don't care how many people you know, and I don't imagine it's going to be that many to begin with, it's not going to affect the overall voting. Yeah, for girl, no we'll friends, you got a good shot. I guess. There are I people, mean, if people want to date. There are people uh, voting in 10 cities in this country, and there are people that are writing in saying they'll fly in from New York, from who knows. I would hope so. I would love to meet guys in other places other than here sometimes. Right. Right. <laughs> new, yeah, yeah new, pl new ball players. Now, okay? did you make your statement? This is the opportunity to make your statement. Yeah, Derek Jeter wants to play it. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to make a statement? already asked me that, and I didn't take that chance. So you don't want to make a statement? I do want to make a statement. Well, go ahead. Well, I don't, I'm a classy bitch. I don't have to be bitter about some man. And I have the attitude. I have the best body out of all these girls. And I think that people should vote for me because my attitude has been on the air for two years now. And people know how I am. That's the I don't problem. have to claim yeah. it. <laughs> the T-Man. What do they teach you to talk like this in some Panama City sailor want a hump hump bar? Sell crazy someplace else. We're all stocked up here. Your Cube News Update. You're listening to the best of T-Man. The T-Man will be back on live in no time. Now more of the best of T-Man. Star, good luck to you, love. Good luck, Thanks, Star. Yeah. Hey, if there's any rightfulness in the world, after all the times you've come close only to lose. So close. And you've shot BBs <laughs> in your mom's ass. You played sex over glass with Star's mom. <laughs> That'll be your mom. You uh, <laughs> should finally become a bride and not be a bridesmaid any longer. 
Okay. So. All right. Thank you. All right. Take care. Bye bye. But if you stuff. lose, what is? I wonder what she's going to attribute it to. Hmm? I was in the fourth position. Why was I bitchler number four? It's going to have all these excuses. Mm-hmm. Who else? Let's go right to bitchler number one. The contestant number one is Constance. She was oh, the first one in the door. Right. She blew us away right off the bat, Terry. Boy, did she! With her attitude combined with her uh, her good looking uh, mm-hmm. appearance. Mm-hmm. She is so far doing well in the voting, or no? Yeah. Jimmy Fred Wayman. She is actually in the lead. Ah, with 33%. now these things can change really quickly. Good morning, Constance. Good morning. How are you? Star, shut up. Ah! Wow. Oh my God, wow. sweetheart. Hey man, can I just say something to Star? Yes. I am so irritated by listening to her. She needs right, wait, to get wait, wait. on. Get Star back on the line. <laughs> Get me Star. <laughs> How the, hold on, Constance. Constance, take it hold, hold on one Jeez. second. Let me find Star for a second. Let me, Breathe, Constance. She, she did, she's already called back in? Okay, Breathe. good. Constance is like a Texas tornado man, just ready to oh, explode at any minute. I think I just disconnected Constance when I put up Star. Oh, jeez. Right, get me Constance back on the line. Star? Uh-huh. I, want, I want to say oh. something to her. Oh. And to everybody else who's right, thinking sit. about voting right, for her. Sit tight. All right, everyone, everyone chill out. Can we just take one deep breath? Yes. And relax. Jay, what do you expect <laughs> when you're playing a game <laughs> called The Bitchler? Starring The Bitchler. Could you expect any last time? All I can say is good thing we didn't have him in the studio. Right. Oh, no. <laughs> that would have been a cat fight. Yes. All right, Star is holding. Mm-hmm. Constance is back. I'm back. Constance gets a chance to say something yeah, to Star that. right now. Go ahead, Thank Constance. You. Star, honey. Give it up, okay? Give up. Oh, you are okay. so irritating. <laughs> I'm not born over the mask we are. This is how I was born. I don't put up with no stuff. You know, you're no scaring bull- all the guys away. I don't see why people are running for you. Honey, gain some weight, Star. Gain some weight. <laughs> oh, I am going to be going away from you. I'm going to be going It's like a dream of yours. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know what, Star? You made yourself sound like a, a female escort. Um, I'm a classy bitch. You know what? I don't have to call myself that. People just see that. You and I have different views on what that means. <laughs> Some guys oh, are in okay. a monogamy. Okay. I'm tired of that. Little girl, little girl, little girl. I don't know that I have a lead. Uh huh. Just like I tell the men, oh well, star, get over it. You're gonna lose. Go back to sleep. I don't want to even go on a date with you when you sit there and you're like, take it or leave it. And I mean, no one can take it or leave it. I don't have to date Mel Ashley. I don't have to date Microsoft Man. I don't have to date you have a kid and you can't even get none. Oh, wow. Okay, there you go. Uh, Star, Star, go to lunch today? Yeah. Star's mom was starting to chime I in. Know. Did you hear that? <laughs> You're tired of that. My Seattle men are like that because uh, females uh, like you. I punched up Car- uh, Constance's line and she was still, still talking. Still going. Uh, Constance. Yes. You uh, <laughs> obviously made a big impression when you were here the first time around. Mm-hmm. Obviously, Star and you are not going to be sharing any uh, Christmas No. Cares. She's so irritating to me. I just yes. can't handle it. I had to say something. Man. And uh, her bio, can you please read Constance's bio <laughs> to us, if you will, Jimmy Fred Weeman. Go ahead. Bitchler number one, Constance. 23 years old, 5 feet 9 inches tall. She told T-Man she knows what you want and doesn't want to waste time playing games. She makes her own money but doesn't want a guy who can't figure out how to make his. Her friends have told her she's bipolar but she just calls it being real. Keep in mind, guys, if you don't call her back when you're supposed to, you're out. Aha! Yeah. Now, is this a fair and accurate biography of uh, contestant number one, Bitchler candidate number one, Constance? Yes, that's exactly right. Is, exactly there any, right. is there any final word you want to tell the listening audience before they go to the voting polls this morning? This is me. This is how I am. Even if I don't win, I'm going to be this way tomorrow, the day after. This is how I am, and I'm not going to change or falsify myself for the show. This is exactly me. I'm, so. at, my, I'm at my voting poll right now. Today. No, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Thank pull on you, it. Thank you, a constant. <laughs> I'm pulling the lever, Terry. Yes, I'm sure you are. <laughs> How's your hanging, Chad? (laughs) I'm just going to wipe that up there. Okay. (laughs) Where is Bitchler number two? A lot of people impressed by uh, Bitchler number... Well, actually, no. Bitchler number two, we had a problem with her sending a picture in that uh, looked like it showed her best foot forward, if you will, Terry. Yes. Even though there are no feet in the picture, you get what I mean? Okay. We have changed her name as well. And we, and we have changed her name at her request because she said after she came in, 
she was starting to get a couple of people at work coming up to her, annoying her that she was a bachelor candidate and asking her a lot of questions that she didn't feel like asking when she was trying to do work in the workplace. Ah, uh, okay. So she is now Megan. <laughs> Good morning, Megan. So now Good they'll call morning. her Megan. <laughs> How are you, love? Fine and yourself. I'm doing well. Now after hearing the last two contestants, she's trying to add a little contrast and sounding very laid back, very mellow. Megan's picture is a little bit uh, distant, you'll notice on the internet. You really can't get the overall, but you can get a sense of what's going on in the life of Megan when you see her picture. Okay. Will that dissuade people from voting that they can't get a real top quality photo? We'll find out. But Megan is a strong candidate in a lot of people's opinion that met Megan. And if you'd like to share a word with us right now as to, uh, to persuade some of the voters out there, this is your opportunity to do so. I just like to tell the voters that if they vote for Star, this is a voice that we're going to have to hear for the longest T-Man stays on the air. So we might as well get rid of Star now, and maybe by her losing again, she'll get over herself because her voice is becoming very annoying. Oh. Hmm. So she took on Star again. Yeah, yes. <laughs> it's kind of hard not to take on Star, and yes. I'm trying to take that laid-back approach. Yes. But... Why would you Why would you make a good bachelor candidate that all the people that are writing in would be inspired to come down and uh, get in line and, if they have to, joust each other to make sure, like in the old days, yes. they win your hand? Because I'm the one that doesn't wait to think about what you're going to say. I just say it. I hate people who say, oh, oh I should have said this, or if I had this opportunity, I would have done that. That's straight for it, and I do it, and I show no remorse. So that's why people either think it's rude or they think it's a bitch. Mm -hmm. Now, since everyone is taking a shot at Star, I guess we have to give it another opportunity uh -huh. to rebut Terry. Oh, geez. Oh, another geez. rebuttal opportunity, if you will. Good morning, a Star. Hi. You know, what? I don't see why you're trying to sound all nicey nice now, and you only change your name because you're a damn criminal. All the guys are already scared of you too. <laughs> Wow. Let me tell you No one's changing their bank accounts, clearing it out, blah, blah, blah. You know what, Star? Well, they've had to hear my voice for two years, and I think that some of them even like it. I don't really give a crap what you think about my voice. They're going to exactly. vote, and they've already shown votes because you have the least amount of them. Why don't you take two years off and grow up and stop sucking on your mom's breath? Oh. And oh. Oh. I'm not very alert because I work full time away. and I go to school. Thank you oh. very much. What do you do? What do you do? What's your job? What's your job, baby? What's your job, baby? Because I have a full time job. With there your you go. Not another. Thanksgiving invitation for Star. I don't think so. Oh, but we move on to the final contestant. And as I was alluding to, uh, Terry, this one's picture is the opposite of uh, Megan's. It is very clear. It is huh? very focused. And in itself, it is getting a lot of people around here inspired just on the, the appearance of the picture, if okay. you will. Right. A I'm lot inspired. of people are... Our fans of the picture of contestant number three, bachelor candidate number three. That would be Amber. Good morning again, Amber. Good morning. How are you, love? Fine. Okay, bad cell coverage. It's not going to help her in the voting. No. I'm having trouble hearing you, Amber. Can you get to a better cell site? Uh, can you hear me now? I hope she takes on store. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's have another star <laughs> rebuttal here. <laughs> Amber, how are you? Yeah. And can you, if you have a moment, tell us why the voters who are going to their polls right now need to vote for you? Um, well, we don't want any psycho If you're going for the non-psycho bitch vote I'm getting from her through mm -hmm. the uh, bad cell coverage, you'll go to Amber. Yes. She's a bitchler candidate, but not a psycho bitch. <laughs> Okay, there's him. Yeah. <laughs> she just said Star is horrible, too. Oh, is that right? Yeah, Star sucks. I heard that. That's clear. <laughs> Let's get an opportunity for Star <laughs> to combat okay. that. Star, she's going off on you right now, and you'll say what to her? They're all just hating because they're jealous, and she's just trying to play nicey-nice, too. She needs to go and just go get a new cell phone. Obviously, her clothes don't look like she's all that classy either. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, okay. Hello? Bank account? Blow! Boy. Cheap cell phone, cheap clothes. <laughs> and star. Taking them all on. Oh, yeah. Class all the way, so she claims. Very interesting, Terry. It will be. Yes, yes ladies and gentlemen, it is in your hands. In your hands.
Ben. Starring the Bitchler. It's www.thetmanshow.com. On the very first page, you'll see a link that says vote for the Bitchler. The polls will be open throughout the day, the evening, into tomorrow, Terry. All right. And we will knight the woman, yes, who will be the Bitchler. Now, yes. back to the thing I was alluding to earlier, Terry. What about these guys? <laughs> I was just thinking, oh, one lucky guy out yeah. there. Yes. <laughs> Honestly, Actually, if you look at the pictures... Lucky. And you keep in mind what all four ladies seem to have in common. And I was not, uh, I was actually taken aback by their statement when they all seem to have this common thread. They all said they were looking for a guy. Basically, I think they even used the same exact word, to tame them. Mm -hmm. Tame is usually a word reserved for wildlife animals. <laughs> and yet they use that word. They are looking for the right guy to come along in their life. They're not looking to be going out there and going to the single scene any longer. All four ladies have one thing in common. They are waiting for the right guy to step into their lives and become the guy and not only the guy, but a man who can tame them. Right. The taming of the shrew. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that, it, really, when you look at all four of them, right. and once once one of them, whoever it is, is tamed, the, 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 the man will find that she actually is a co very compatible and, and good partner to be with. Yes. And not necessarily always the bitchler there type person. Well, the voting is open. We'll make a decision on whether guys can start nominating themselves in the next couple of minutes. But, ladies and gentlemen, go to the polls. The T-Man. Why do you shamelessly waste my time like this? Oh, no. You're listening to The T-Man Show on Seattle's number one hit music station, Cube 93. Before we readdress the dilemma of the, uh, we have to have a ruling body determine whether guys can start nominating themselves, seeing that I was a little bit moved, as I pointed out, Terry, by all the guys uh, writing in saying they would like to be a part of it, but they don't have anyone to nominate them. Right. What do I do, T-Man? Before we go on to that, on one of these phone lines, I think it needs to be addressed immediately. Apparently, there is trouble in paradise between old man Jim and Kim. Ooh. Ooh. Huh? Really? Apparently, <clears throat> according to Kim, who's on the phone line right now. Yes. Old man Jim just came in the door. What? Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> no way. <laughs> After being out all night, and she is livid. I would be, too. Well, let's be honest. He's old man Jim. He is I old man I think he's running around Jim. chasing breezies all night. What? A very good chance he could have been sleeping at a bus stop, for all we know. <laughs> he didn't know where home was. Let me see what... Uh, Kim? Yeah. How are you? You sound a little distraught. I can almost hear the tears already. Are you very angry or sad or what? Right now, I have no feelings right now because I'd kill him if I had a mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. If she allows any emotion to creep into her body, Terry, yes. she may strangle her boyfriend, the elder statesman. Yeah. And you're still 32 of you moved on to 33, Kim. I, went, I was 33 in May. Okay, it sounds like you've done some crying. I can hear a woman, believe me, I know it all too well, who's, <laughs> who's done some crying uh, over the past number of moments. You're, if I'm understanding correctly, old man Jim just staggered in the door. Is that fair to say? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. And uh, you've been waiting up uh, all night for him? You were concerned? Yeah. You know, it ain't the point about him. Oh, know? yeah. It ain't that he could have called me and told me, look, I'm I'm getting a little dick dance or whatever. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh my uh -huh. God. Now has he fallen asleep? Is he up? No, right? I'm, he has to stay up all day. He cannot go to sleep, as far no. as you're concerned. That's his punishment. He's been up all night, now you have to stay up all day. Oh, see how yeah. see how vindictive women can be, Terry. Uh, hey, the man's I out know. enjoying a little night to himself, I'm sure. But she's and now he's not allowed to go to sleep. Are you are you starting to think, uh, based on your feeling right now, and I know you don't want to act on uh, any hasty kind of spur of the moment feeling you have. You don't want to be impulsive, but at this given moment, do you feel like you're thinking of ending things with old man Jim? Oh, that's a tough question. All right, put him on the phone. Okay. Just contemplating it. Yeah, she even though she is. is. That's weird. I mean, that's a they tough were as question. happy as a 33-year-old and a 97-year-old could be yesterday, <laughs> Terry. And now we got a problem. 
Jim? Yeah? Oh, boy. What the hell was going on last night, sir? Oh, hit a few bars. Huh? <laughs> Who'd you go out with? Just yourself or you, yeah, uh, a couple were of you in? Were you alone with some of your Yakima buddies or what? No, I just went out by myself. Don't touch me! Oh, oh I heard an open hand slap, Terry. <laughs> Jim, are you okay? Yeah. Do you need a medic? No. Okay. Where did she hit you? On the hands. <laughs> a she slap across her. the wrist. I touched her leg. Uh huh. She <laughs> slapped that hand good. Yeah. Okay. So you went out last night. You went to a couple of bars. You probably got yourself a little liquored up there. Fair to say, Jim? Yeah. And you weren't in any condition to drive home. No. Were you driving a vehicle last night? Yeah. Oh, why don't you why don't why don't you turn to your loving girlfriend and explain now Kim can't say those words on the air. Right. Does she know that? <laughs> I think yeah, she knows. Can't say those on the air. <laughs> why don't you Okay. Why don't you turn to your loving girlfriend right now and explain that, yes, it was a night out that was expected, as far as you were concerned, to be ending by about 11 midnight, and yet you realized you were in a state that is one that you're not allowed to drive in, so you just cooled off and you fell asleep somewhere in the bar or something like that. Make up something good, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, no he way. Knows. Go ahead. Try to reason with your girlfriend. She, If she loves you, she'll understand. I think I would better leave well enough alone. <laughs> See, well, I mean. What is the explanation you gave her, Jim? I haven't given her one yet. Mm -hmm. You just came in, said, hey, how you doing this morning, honey? And and trying to curl up next to her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And again, where were you? Uh, you said you went to a couple of bars, and, and don't bars close in Yakima at some point or no? Yeah. And then what did you do after closing, Jim? I slept in my truck. Mm -hmm. You were sleeping it off. Yeah. Well, that should be... She doesn't believe that you slept in your van? No. She thinks you were out with some hoochies last night? Yeah. Were you? No. Sleeping in the van, though, huh? Yeah. In front of the bar or where? It's cold here. All right, why don't you use this angle? Go, go, Kim, look at me. Do you really think I was out with some hoochies last night? Kim, look at me. Yeah. You think I was out with some hoochies last night? Probably. <laughs> But I wasn't, sweetheart. <laughs> Jim, you didn't call when you decided uh, when you decided the bar was closing and you weren't in any state to, you weren't in any state to go home uh, by driving yourself. You didn't call Kim to tell her where you would be. Uh uh Why not, Jim? I was sleeping with Van. Yeah, but well, before you <laughs> <laughs> got that part down, Jim, Good that's one, programmed. Jim, uh, uh, yeah. Jim uh -huh. be before you fell asleep, the thought of calling uh, Kim didn't cross your mind at all. Nope. Why not there, Jim? <laughs> How come, Jim? I knew I was in the doghouse when I mm -hmm, mm -hmm. closed the bar down. Um, you were there closing the bar down. You knew you'd be in trouble to begin with, so why even call? Yeah. I see. Could you not have taken maybe a taxi home or something? No, I probably could have. But, but you opted <laughs> for sleeping in, in your truck. Yeah. What would have been reasonable as far as Kim's concerned? What time were you allowed to stay out till? Well, I ain't really allowed to stay out any time. I just take off and go. So do you feel like you're a kept man, Jim? Mm hmm? Do you feel like you're under her thumb? Do you feel like you're on lockdown or what? No. She does give you some freedom. Yeah. But you're saying you're not allowed to go out at all. What? Well, Jim, we go together. Mm-hmm. So why did you opt to go alone last night? Were you just needing some time to yourself, Jim? Yeah. This oh, yeah. Every man needs a little time Every to man needs a little time to himself. Oh, boy. <laughs> now, now, Jim, if, if she did the same, wouldn't you be upset or, or... Oh, yes, I would. So you can understand her being... Her, yeah, I can understand her being upset. Because but... she's probably concerned. I mean, you know, I mean, you never know what happens. She, she didn't know if you'd right. been hit by a car or whatever. But so. you, all, you also know, knowing your girlfriend pretty well, Jim, that she's going to cool off. You may have to take a couple of shots in the chops between now and noon, but everything's going to be fine. You know you, what you can get away with, don't you, Jim? Yeah. Yeah. It's not like she's packing up right now. You know she's going nowhere, don't you, Jim? Right. If you thought there was a chance of her going somewhere, you wouldn't have stayed out all night, would you have? No. How Ooh. often do you do this, Jim? Oh, once every month or so. <laughs> <laughs> so this was your night? Yeah. Tell her, turn to her and say, I'm sorry, honey, this was my night to screw up, and maybe it got a little bit too much. 
I'm sorry, honey. This is my night to screw up. Maybe it got a little bit too much away from me. <laughs> now he's got to screw himself, too. Yeah, he does. But beware of that dryer. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I already start to sense, Terry, yes. that things are starting to come together. Just a little lover's quarrel. Uh-huh. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Between old man Jim yeah. and his beautiful girlfriend, mm-hmm. the lovely Kim, yeah. and whoever else may be in Jim's life. Right. <laughs> Would you like to turn to her and sing, old man Jim? Pardon? <laughs> <laughs> Women love to be serenaded. Not really. Why don't you turn? She don't like my singing. She doesn't like your singing. <laughs> and if I can't find Why don't you turn to her in a very little boy kind of voice? Say, "Don't you love me, Kim?" Hey, baby. Don't you love me a little bit, baby? I apologize. I'm sorry. Now, come on over here. Give me a little bit of that brown sugar, baby. (laughs) She's fixing to go. She's mad at me. She's really getting herself ready to go out the door? Yeah. Say, before you leave, let me play with the ass a little bit. (laughs) (laughs) Say that, Jim. It may work. Hey, baby. Let me play with your ass a little bit before you leave. Have something to remember. (laughs) See, now he's being (laughs) so Right now. <laughs> <laughs> T-Man will never get a person beat. <laughs> Kim really is. She's just say, dead. say, Kim. Kim. Come on over here. Let me take a bite out of your apple ass. Come here. Give me a hug. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. No, Jim. The let me version. <laughs> let me take a bite out of that apple ass, baby. Let me take a bite out of your ass, baby. <laughs> <laughs> It's very precious to you. <laughs> Hide the car keys. <laughs> we'll talk to you soon, sir. If there's anything okay. you need to talk to us about, you call us back, all right? Yeah, I sure will. Yeah, take care, sir. Okay. Uh, bye-bye. Oh, yeah. Have, have yeah. Oh, 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 you know, they are! Oh, yeah. In your heart, you know he's right. The T Man Show. You're listening to the best of T Man. The T Man will be back on live soon. Now, more of the best of T Man. Yes, Julia. T Man, I'm pissed. Why is that, Julia? Don't sound all condescending. What is this, Star? I lost in the final cut against Star. Uh, yeah, she's a, yes, Julia. She's a pathetic groupie, T-Man. Julia, I guess, honestly tried out for The Bitchler, yes. and yet I don't even remember who she is, to be honest. But I know she's on the line and has been for the past hour because she's angry that she wasn't selected as one of the four finalists. When did you come in, Julia? What did you say? Give me some way of remembering you. No, see, this is not the issue. The issue is, is that... Star. Why are you not a finalist and you're upset with Star? Why is everyone so upset with Star? <laughs> Get Star because, in the line. <laughs> because you're saying that I wasn't a bitch when I was on the air, but neither was she. Hey, she just had insight Star that was did black. not That's earn stupid. her way into the Bitchler finals by uh, what she did in the studio through her mouth. She earned her way into the finals by playing Sex Over Glass with her mom. And it's that simple. There should yeah, only that's not bitchy. There was yeah. only going to be three finalists. I made an exception for Star, who's been a loyal listener mm-hmm. for so it's many pathetic. years. That Star did not affect or have any kind of effect on you being or not being in the finals. So don't get on Star's case. She didn't take a spot that would have been yours. If it wasn't for Star, there would have been three finalists, and it still wouldn't have been you. I don't understand why you didn't just let the audience vote for everyone. I am why letting the audience vote. Because we decided to give the audience the best finalists. You were not amongst the best. Whatever. I think you had the bitchiness down. I'm not sure you were hot enough. I don't remember who you were, but the chances oh, are that's you, the case. You emailed me last night saying my picture was bomb. That wasn't what? me. But yeah, it was. where's her picture? Show me your picture. You sent in a picture? I don't even remember seeing a picture. I think on the website. I know. That's because I sent it in last last night. Let me see the picture. <laughs> 
Wasn't she one of the awaiting pictures? That is not a bad picture, actually. That's a pretty good picture. I don't remember meeting that you, but that is not a bad picture. I put that picture up, <laughs> but she's not allowed to get any votes. I want people to what? see her picture. That is a good picture. That is a pretty good picture. That's a very good picture. You remember her picture. being in the studio? I have no I, recollection I of her being in the studio. I don't remember her, that picture of yeah, her. Yeah, that girl didn't come in. Yeah, yeah. that girl did not come <laughs> in. If that girl had come in, right. you'd probably be a finalist. Yeah. Now, because you took one great picture of yourself over the course of 20-some-odd years, does not a finalist make? Quick question for you. Is that like you going when you go out to the club and stuff like that? Yeah. So See, why didn't you why didn't you come in looking that way? <laughs> because why why are we going to wear a skank outfit? It's not skankler. It should be <laughs> next time. <laughs> Great idea. The skankler. <laughs> so you admit that you were a skankler on that night. On that night, hell yeah. Well, part of being the bitchler, I think is a hint of skankiness. Part of your attitude or as maybe well. not a skankler per se, right. but the ability to, to play the part yeah. of a skanky woman if need be. Right. Well, then that, why is that the picture you send in all of a sudden? Yeah, why did you send that picture in if you didn't want to profess yourself as some skank? No one can see me when I'm on the air. What, what do I care? We were the ones that you had to impress. Had I known that, I would have dressed up not know a little that. bit more. Okay. Us, honey, yeah. right? What you read the rule book. You walk in saying, oh, I got to probably impress someone. I don't know who, though. But if I'm, if, if I'm just completely, yeah. unless I'm completely mistaken from looking in here, the pictures that I'm seeing from 10 feet away looks pretty damn good. Yeah, sure that, does. That is. Well, a you blew it. Picture. Sorry, you blew it. Bye. Definitely not the one that came in. Can we put that picture anywhere up on the uh, on I think the we should. We should. Internet, yes. Terry. Yes, in the on the and internet. And then put a big caption, you're not allowed to vote for her. Right. Let's call her the skankler. <laughs> yes. Yeah. The skankler. <laughs> yeah, put a coming attractions to the skankler and put her picture uh, underneath. Right. She'll mm -hmm. be the first candidate for the skankler. Everyone <laughs> who didn't get selected. And we didn't even see that many women. I, I cut it short to prevent something like this from happening. Right. Pre preventing there being an outcry. Because I knew we had th three very strong finalists. And Star is a strong candidate in her own right and earned her way in. Mm -hmm. So why do I have to keep letting women down? I've got to call up screaming at me. Well, it's amazing. Like the skankler. <laughs> because they, they, when they come down, it's almost like, uh, you know, it's an interview, so so to speak. So when you go to an interview, regardless you of whether it's a job... You put your best absolutely. skank foot forward. You, uh, it's impression. And then she's getting on us. Oh, I didn't know. <laughs> Shut your ass! <laughs> She knew. She knows what she's dealing with here, man. What's the easiest way to get us, you know, our attention? You're going to be a big dummy. Don't blame me. Right. It'll be cool, though, this cankler, just in time for the holiday. And I swear, even looking at that picture, I have no recollection of any kind, not even a vague memory of her being in the studio. I don't know who she was, when she came down here, what she said. That picture of that woman, I have no remembering uh, thought in my head of... Her sitting in the studio. All right. Do you? Do you know who she was? I, well, I kind of, I recognize the face, yes. But. I have to look I, a lot closer. That's why I was so surprised. Hang on a second. Put that, turn that thing to me again. It's definitely a night oh, and day situation. I know. Turn it. Turn it. <laughs> I have no, I, I don't know who the hell that is. It, it's definitely a, a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde right. type situation. <laughs> yeah. You come in as Mr. Hyde. <laughs> I don't know which one was better. <laughs> right. Dr. Jekyll. Okay, Dr. Jekyll was... All right, never mind. <laughs> ah, it's not a great analogy, Terry. <laughs> well, two different people. All right, now, while people are voting, yes. should we give an update as to where the voting stands? And obviously, what was the one who just came on complaining? What was her name? Angela? Julia. Or, uh, Julia. 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 What was... Uh, obviously, she has 0% of the vote. Right. <laughs> what but did hey. the other four finalists have? Jimmy Fred Weeman. Yes, uh, Bitchler number one, Constance, is in first place with 36% of the vote. Oh. Bitchler number three, Amber, is in second place with 33% of the votes. Yes. Uh, Bitchler number four, Star, is in third place with 26% of the votes. Right. And Megan is lagging far behind with 4% of the Only votes. Only 4%. She said in a picture that you can't do anything with as a person out there doing some voting. Right. You can't see enough. She's a good candidate, I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. There are others just as good or better or worse, I don't know. But she's right up there and she's only got 4%. She screwed herself. She screwed many guys, too. Oh, jeez. <laughs> the T-Man. I mean, not many girls in contemporary American society today would give their own award to help a geek like me. And we'll be back on live, well, sometime later.
Now more of the best of team as the voting team goes man. on. When I got all engulfed in the conversation with the four ladies uh, a couple of, what was it, about almost an hour ago now. Right. I never got to all four bios. Right. And Jimmy Fred Weeman was doing a great job. Oh, thank you, T. At reading with flair and enthusiasm, with zeal and zest, Terry. Both? Wow. He was getting zestfully clean while reading these bios, and I would like him to read all four again so people out there who may not... Uh, be willing to, I don't know, read through all of them, may have an idea as to who the four contestants are. Why don't you do that real quickly, starting with contestant number one, who's in the lead, Constance. Bitchler number one, Constance, 23 years old, 5 feet 9 inches tall. <laughs> she told T-Man she knows what she wants and doesn't want to waste time playing games. She makes her own money, but doesn't want a guy who can't figure out how to make his. Mm -hmm. Her friends have told her she's bipolar, but she just calls it being real. Keep in mind, guys, if you don't call her back when you're supposed to, you're out. Bitch. That's Bitchler number one, Constance. Bitchler <laughs> number two is? Megan. Megan. She's Tell us about Megan, please. Megan is 25 years old, 5 feet 9 inches tall. Her bitchiness started way back in high school when she stood up her date for the prom. Oh. She also left a man hanging at the altar mm. just for the fun of it because he didn't give her the proper amount of attention. She has sabotaged men's personal bank accounts and stolen computer passwords to screw with their lives. Okay, that's what Star was alluding to when she called her a crook. Yes. A bachelor number three is... Amber. She's 22 years old and 5 feet 4 inches tall. She describes herself as one quarter white, one quarter black, one half Native American, and 100% bitch. Yeah! Proclaims that she hates all women. She explained that she was recently dumped for the first time, which has only added to her evil ways. She is, however, looking for the right guy to tame her. That's Bitzler number three, Amber. Bitzler number four is... Star. Star is 20 years old. Yeah, I heard of her. Five feet, three inches tall, though she claims to be five foot four. Right. She has no friends but her mom because of her nasty attitude. Has had sex with some high-profile men, i.e. Seattle Mariners, Microsoft executives, and radio personalities, not us. <laughs> Earned her way into the finals by playing Sex Over Glass with Star's mom. That's Bitchler number four, Star. Good hey, job, Weeman. Good job, Weeman. Man. What a decision to make, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yeah. And obviously, you're having your trouble already because the voting could change at any time. Mm. I mean, I've seen people in last place, and before you know it, a few hours later, maybe it's a certain demographic that comes in, Terry. Yeah, a, certain, a certain geographic location. They start counting the exit polls there, mm. and they're right back in the thick of it. www.thetmanshow.com. The polls are open right now. Go and check out these four ladies' pictures. You can see the bios that Jimmy Fred Weeman so eloquently read just right now. Yeah. Thank you again, team. Right. Oh, you're not getting used, along. That's not great. used to getting compliments. I know. <laughs> it's a rare day. Much appreciated. And you can cast your vote because the actual game of The Bitchler is not far away, Terry. I know. Which brings us to that other dilemma that I spoke of. Yes. I started reading some of the letters from ladies, and we stipulated that only ladies can write in to nominate the guys that are going to meet the bitchler, whoever she may turn out to be. As I pointed out, we've been getting letters from as far away from New York, from women saying they know a guy who said that they're willing to travel. Do you believe that? Willing to get on a plane? <laughs> is that carried away or what? It's <laughs> great. I think it's Elmont, New York. Or where? Where is this? Uh, I lost the email. A woman says a guy in her area that she knows is a friend of hers said to her, please write for me, nominate me. I'm willing to get on a plane to meet the bitchler because I feel in my heart she's the one for me. There you go. Even though he doesn't know which one of the four it's going to be. Right. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a feeling of. Right? Eh, at least he'd be happy with any of them. Yes. One of them is a soulmate, and whoever the listeners vote will be that one. Right. <laughs> You, there was one. We are also getting uh, emails. Let me give you a couple ideas of what people are writing. Dear T-Man, I would like to nominate my friend Jason to date the bitchler. Jason is a great guy who's never seemed to make it work long term with a woman. Jason is five foot 11, 180 pounds, black hair, green eyes. He's funny. He has a great job, great salary, comes from a great family, a lot of greats. Yeah. You may wonder why I'm not going out with him. Well, I've tried. Ooh. A tough customer, huh? Mm hmm we can't take it any further beyond the friendship level. Wow. 
Mm-hmm. Just stringing her along. <laughs> Taking advantage of her vulnerability and her crush that she's had on him. Obviously, this Jason's a player. There you go. Working it well. And she wants these women to be a bitch to him, so she'll he'll run back to her. Yes. <laughs> uh, he always dates beautiful women. That's not me. He treats women. <laughs> I do notice he treats women wonderfully. Oh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think Grayson. I think Jason could tame the bachelor. Here's my number. Blah 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 blah. Uh, yes. Let's call Jason. Mm-hmm. I don't know how you dial that number. Though. <laughs> yeah. My son Raul. Oh my son. <laughs> Would be a great candidate for your bachelor contest. He's sweet, handsome, and smart. <laughs> he does not know that I'm nominating him, but I would love to have one of these beautiful girls as a potential daughter-in-law. Is that ridiculous or what? Wow. That's a big risk there, Mama. My son gets so nervous whenever he gets into something serious with a woman. I know he needs you to help him with the hookup. Just hoping he's not gay. Some mom trying desperately hard to use lingo that she thinks yeah. is in. <laughs> Stop that. Yes. Please consider him for this contest. He's great once you get to know him. Here's my number. Yada, yada, yada. And even with all these emails that we are getting from women, I'm getting uh, as many, well, maybe not quite as many, but a ton of guys are writing in saying, T-Man, what the hell? Right. I've been listening to the Bitchler stuff that you've been doing for the past week and a half. I uh, had seen myself as far as visualizing myself as one of the 15, 20, 25 guys that you're going to choose to meet the bachelor, and now I don't know how to get involved because no women will nominate me. Oh. It says a lot about them, but <laughs> yeah, I guess it's hard to keep going up to women saying, hey, you got to write into the team man for me. I can understand that being tough, and maybe we were a little bit impulsive and hasty in our decision to say that men couldn't nominate their, themselves. So I'd like to take a re-vote right now, and I will vote that men can start nominating themselves. Maybe they send in pictures, whatever the case may be. Because you got to be of a certain yeah. level of attractiveness. Sure, sure. Like if I were to send in my own picture, Terry, yeah. it'd be immediately <laughs> thrown out. <laughs> Your vote here is worth 10, right? My vote? Yeah, you guys could vote all in the <laughs> contrarian type opinion. And right. it's still going to be the way I say it. Okay. Uh, so let's take a T-Man vote. All those in favor... Of starting to take men to nominate themselves, say aye. All uh, those who disagree, say nay. Nay. The eyes have it. <laughs> <laughs> you just did that to make me seem like the bad guy. <laughs> well, again, the, you know, you are the burning bush and all. Mm-hmm. So men should get to vote. Oh, jeez. Look who's calling in for whatever reason. I don't want to know. Oh, He's wow. a gay phone operator. He's so gay. He's so phone operator. And now, here's gay. A good morning. Good morning. You didn't stay out all night last night, bar hopping and then sleeping in your truck? No. <laughs> yes, gay. I'm willing to do something for the show. Yes, gay. <laughs> Those guys that don't have anybody to nominate them, if they want to send me their picture with an email. Jeez. Oh, I'll rate them, and then I'll nominate them if they're cute enough. Uh, yes, gay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anybody's jumping for that one. Gay. Though. I'm trying to help. Yeah, right. I know you're trying, but you're failing. But okay. I'm trying. There, there's trying. I'm trying. Some trying leads to success. Better than nothing. Other trying leads to failure. <laughs> kind of like your job hunt. At least I tried. <laughs> gay. At least I'm trying. You really have all this time on your hands? I have a little bit of extra time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> a little <Yeah>. bit. <laughs> Shouldn't you be scouring the internet for, like, uh, help-wanted ads? I would be doing this at nighttime on my own time. <laughs> you <laughs> your own time. time? Yeah. Or where? Well, gay. Yeah. <laughs> Not a company Daytime time. is looking for a job. You, nighttime You do is have your own time. website, and if traffic is slowed on that website, I'm sorry to hear about it, but if people want to email you their picture and have you nominate them, that's fine. But I have just decided, actually, we all came to a consensus vote, yeah, I heard. People mm-hmm. can email whoever they are, man, woman, or child, <laughs> to nominate themselves or others. Now it doesn't matter if you want to nominate someone or you want to nominate yourself. Go to www.thetmanshow.com. You can see that you'll get one of the four finalists that is sitting there waiting to see who gets the most votes. And all of them are very, very fascinating ladies, looks-wise and otherwise. 
Or you can go to gayphoneoperator.com, oh, email geez. me first, and, you know, make my day. How about we let the guys crap in your closet? Uh, no. <laughs> then they can you be nominated. You eat it, and I'll do it. Oh, oh gosh. God. Good. Steven, nice. deal, deal, deal. Yeah. Is that a deal? <laughs> Well, I got to think about that one. <laughs> the T Man. I mean, not many girls in contemporary American society today would give their own award to help a geek like me. Q93. The T Man will be back on live in no time. Now, more of the best of T Man. Now, uh, Terry, I know you have a pile of stories over there that you would like to get to. Yes. I would like to get to them myself, believe it or not. But. Star's mom is on one of these phone lines, and she's not very happy about something, and I think we should uh, make sure she's uh, in a happier place, especially on a morning where her, her daughter is putting up a good showing mm -hmm. thus far. Yes, not in the lead. Yes, in third place out of four, but still in the thick of it as far as winning in something that Star's mom that was, was very, very excited about her becoming the bachelor to be in front of guys of all types, from all places, what is wrong with Star's mom this morning? Hi. Oh, jeez. I never s heard her sound so soft. Oh, good. I know. Yes, Star's mom. Yeah, I usually, um, I tried to call two years, and I make him all wrong image to my daughter. You've been calling for two years, and the, the all wrong image of your daughter has been given? Well, well, your daughter people, was on the air for the... Uh, people listening, they got it like, like what it says, one, one of them got one bachelor, whatever it is. She well, the said. girls are going at each other, Star's mom. That's understandable. Everyone wants to win. They're all firing back tooth and nail at but, each other, uh, trying to step on the other to get themselves a little bit further advanced in this process. No, all That's this part idea, of the game. No, all this idea and my daughter is they have a full time work, full time school. She don't have a time. She don't she have most time spent with me. I like to she go out with the quality guys and have a fun. That's all I want. But thing is that whatever you guys put on there seems to me is my daughter's got really bad image to everybody listening. Oh just what did we put on the air that is untrue about your daughter? Well my daughter first of all, my daughter stay home because she takes care of me. Okay, she takes care of you. Take care yeah, of each other. Know, that's nice. My daughter, my my older daughter, they she stay home too because she takes care of me. Okay. Another thing is that that doesn't mean she's not taking care of herself. All right. She takes care of herself. She takes care of you. She goes to school. This has all been said before. This is nothing yeah. new. What? Well, that's what I'm saying. She's been out of time, school and work. Your daughter was screaming at the other uh, ladies who are part of this contest, which caused them to want to fire back at her. Because if she started first, she say it. Who so started daughter, first? That, that, whatever that half a brown, half a brown hair girl. <laughs> no. <laughs> your daughter started first, actually. No, it isn't. She, you remember you put on her. And airs, yes, and but your daughter about. made a comment. Star made a comment about Constance before Constance made a comment about her. Star was the well, first one. Honestly, who looks the more whole? My daughter doesn't <laughs> have a baby. You know that? Your oh, daughter boy. doesn't have any children. Your yes. daughter. Hey, we're not evaluating who, if anyone, is a whore by any means. We're looking That's for someone I'm with a little bit of an attitude. Well, I, now, I now, you can't tell me that you can understand. You can't understand that these women might fire back and forth at each other. Some comments. Given the heat of the competition, that may be a little bit uh, off color, if you will. But you need to understand, my daughter is still young, innocent, and another girl is happy. You a are the same woman who came down no. here, Star's mom, no, no. when we had to talk about your daughter having sex with Mariner ball players. Don't so be giving me the. I'll stay with him. Fine. I'll stay with him. Even if she broke up with him, and he should keep the car in my house, and she's uncomfortable with him, so she cut off. Fine. She went out on a date with the, one of the Mariner ball players before she had sex with him. That makes it all wholesome. Fine. Whatever. So what are y'all worried that, about? That doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what kind of guys that she date with. See, the thing is that, well, I see you lately. My daughter doesn't have a time. Doesn't look like a guy. Look at the guy at all. Doesn't have a fun to outside. So I say, I'm okay. I'm losing all this now. Yeah, I want a bowl or a cup. Stop. No, so. seriously. She's a, she's a stay old woman with you. me. <laughs> right. So I say, well, I'll just, go out. Star, yes. Star's one mom. Other thing, Star's one mom. Other thing. Who was one of the first people to call in when I announced the Bitchler competition was going to begin? Who was one of the first people on the phone line? You were. Not Star. You were. Yeah, this is my idea. Be, yes. 
But I want my daughter to go out with her family the guy. And maybe she will. And can I also, re, you know, take you back a little bit? And and when we first, you know, <laughs> no, my daughter's back here. Yes. Remember when you first, you know, called the show, Stars Mom? You it was there was a lot of things that Star did not tell you, and you had a certain impression of well, your you own daughter that, that you time, that you didn't even alcohol. know about, you and and you found out she was not so innocent. Her boyfriend cheating on her. You remember that? Yes. I do. But you've also yes. called on occasion, Star's Mom. We have to go over the history here where you said to me personally that you would like me to rein in your daughter a little bit because you are having a tough time doing it yourself. Well, obviously, she's changed it the whole last of two years. All right. Okay? She's changed a lot in the past two years. Fine. You and, see and that? I don't think there's anything you have to be concerned about this morning except for a little high-powered no, competition. I am, I am mad because the listener or inquiry with that person or whoever that half a blonde, whatever it is. Right. <laughs> so they you're putting her my, down. They don't know my daughter. They call my daughter. So what? That's and the point. Her? They don't know your daughter, so what do you care? Yeah. Well, and by the way, it sounded like she could take care of herself just fine this morning. She did. And, and Star gave off the impression this morning, as uh, Hotshot just pointed out, that she can handle herself very well when she's being confronted by accusations that may or may you not be so? true. You think so? Absolutely. Think so. She doesn't need you running to her aid all the time no, like it's the Joy Luck Club. I don't need this. I don't try to care for her. Yes, she can do herself. But thing is, that was. As a mom, what I heard from other girls that call my daughters, those guys stuff. Now, I know you have to be me. protective. We were very impressed, might we add, that mm -hmm. your daughter handled herself in a defense-type fashion in a really high-quality way. She fired back some insults, okay. which are fine with me as far as I'm concerned. All's fair in love and war. Right. And she didn't back down, and she didn't come across as sounding like any kind of uh, unintelligent woman. All right? No, not all right. You want to start taking some calls from other people, getting their opinions on this? Now her chances have even lessened. Yeah. You're on yeah. the air. Hello. Hey, would it be uh, too late to nominate Star's mom as the uh, oh, bitch for oh, I am not bitchler. <laughs> <laughs> but you were one of the first to call in to say that your daughter was perfect for this. And now, look where you are. <laughs> Things are happening really good no, for Star. she's only bachelor with another people. She never bachelor with her ex-boyfriend at all. Jimmy Fred, how is Star doing in the voting right now? Give me the updated voting. The updated voting is... Voting doesn't matter. Star has 27% in third place behind Amber in second and Constant in first with 35% of the So, so Star, Star is within 10% of the person in first place. Eight. She's she's eight percent behind the person in first place. You know how quickly that can change, Star's mom. I know that you'll be the happiest woman in the world if Star wins this thing. I know you after knowing you for uh, having you come in for two three years now. Well, my old point is that she's a, she met some quality guys. But the other thing too, Star's mom, is you have to realize her behavior, whatever it may be, when it comes to dating or sleeping with people, is not Maybe anything. Not. Is not anything different. And I'm trying to defend her. Is not anything out of the ordinary that women are doing these days. It's nothing. I mean, she's, women don't lock it up and no, keep no, it behind. No. Closed doors anymore. Stars, mom, like they did in Okinawa. You remember right. last time I go there and I say my daughter doesn't I don't know have where a friend. She's from. <laughs> yes, my daughter have one friend. Is she Mr. Miyagi? Okay. Yes. She have one married friend. She with her husband. Then my daughter's right. stay home over there. You're on the air. <laughs> Hello. Don't make you fun of me. I'm not making fun of you, Stars, no. mom. Sometimes I lose a little bit in the translation. Go ahead. You're on. Hello? Yes. Star's mom needs to know that her daughter actually had a pretty cool chance in the race, and she just blew it, like, ridiculously. Because I don't feel nobody voting for her now. With their mama care. calling up every two seconds trying to get them to win a race? And you no, trying to I be the bitch for it and got your is. mama calling up? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's true. All yeah. I care is I I, you sound sweet, lady, but I just wanted to let you know you lost it for her. It's over but, for her. No, like, okay. through. Yes, Next, okay. contest. Yes, okay. Next contest. Next contest. <laughs> She'll be right okay. there. Maybe you are not quality, guys. That's why you called like that. Oh! See, well, see, here, she puts here's, people here's, right, here's Star's mom yes. saying something your negative about Your someone. big gripe this morning is that other people put your daughter down. Your daughter fired back some insults very uh, adeptly at these women that were taking her on. And now here you are doing the very same thing that you're condemning other people for, Star's mom. Where's the fairness? Listen. Listen, 
All I say is that last two years I tried to call and I talked to you guys in the air. Yes, I did. I think I did stupid thing because they're making my daughters sound like really bad. Oh jeez, your daughter was sounding. Your daughter was sounding fine until yeah. you called in this morning. She held her own. No, it isn't. <laughs> I'm not holding her by the hair, making her do this, by the way. If she thinks no, it makes her look bad, she doesn't have to do not. it. thing is that I, I am to. upset with it, that how you guys are talking to listeners thing is my daughter is a tech kind girl. That's what I meant. Right. Okay. Okay. Amen. Bye. Bye, baby. <laughs> <laughs> what are you wearing? <laughs> Stop now. I, I don't know what she's worked up about this morning. Somebody called her daughter. Right. Like Star did in the same fashion. Yeah. Oh, gee, a slide, whatever the case may be. All that's going to happen in these type of competitive events. They were slinging it. And that's Star's mom took it very personally because maybe, who knows? I didn't think so before Star's mom called, but one has to conclude that maybe it hit a little too close to home. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Constance's mom didn't call in when what? Star called her a slut. <laughs> and then Star's mom calls people a whore with a baby. Yeah. Nice. Half brown and yellow Slip hair. Half <laughs> <laughs> brown, half yellow hair. <laughs> the T-Man. What do they teach you to talk like this in some Panama City sailor want a hump hump bar? Sell crazy someplace else. We're all stocked up here. You have a T-Man. You're on the air, hello. And there's two things that are going to screw this whole thing up for Star. <laughs> What's that? Number one is a mother, and number two is an annoying voice. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. She's doing pretty well so far in the voting. Yes. The voting is very close. I'm sure a lot of people out there may go the other way. It heard Star's mom on the air this morning and would like Star to finally win something and be in front of all those quality guys. Some may not be so quality, by the way. They're going to be all kinds of guys. But from the letters we've gotten so far, I'm impressed with the ladies who are nominating guys for The Bachelor. Now, I'm sure some men, since I've uh, decreed that men can write in for themselves, I haven't checked the email lately, but I'm sure a lot are coming in. We will weed out as many non-quality guys as possible. <laughs> but no... Little uh, thing like this can be foolproof. I'm sure some very non-quality guys will slip through the cracks, <laughs> so to speak. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> You're on the air. Hello? Hello? Yes. Yes, is this the T-Man? Yes, it is. Hey, man, I really think you should uh, go ahead and let him You should go ahead and let the Oh, when is he gargling or is it a cell phone call? <laughs> huh? Can you start from the beginning? We're having a cell phone issue with you, sir. Turn down your radio. Turn up the radio. Hello? Yes. Yes, I got a lot of saying. I really think you should let her go ahead and win out of pity. She's been on the radio for two damn years. All right, we can't say the S word, but the man's comment. <laughs> The man's comment, he, he, this is what I'm saying. There will be a contrarian opinion here. Here's a man who's, who's feeling for Star because she has been involved in a lot of things we've done. She's always put up a good fight. Mm -hmm. She's always been very competitive. And as yet, uh, she has not gone over the high bar. Right. It's right. only a matter of time. Will this be the time? Right now, the voting says no. Right. <laughs> but this man is a fan of hers. I would like her to win just based on the fact that he's become a fan of hers. Mm -hmm. That sounds nice, and I'm glad you have that thought, sir. And I'm sure Star's mom appreciates that. I don't think she's going to call in screaming at us on that. Yeah. But that's not the way it works, unfortunately. She'll have to win fair and square. I can't all of a sudden start feeling sorry for Star because she's a good listener, and she uh, does a good job and say, hey, I'm going <laughs> to give it to her. As much as you uh, say that we should, I cannot do that. It's not really how we do things around here. <laughs> Contest is so she can win. Right. Ah, no, I changed my mind. The contest off Star Witch. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> got our yeah. And then she's done forever. <laughs> Stephen wants her off. <laughs> yeah, sounds like it. See, Star is like a lot of other people that take part in this program, like gay phone operator, like a lot of people that have their fans and their detractors. I didn't really realize her voice was annoying until today, though. 
<laughs> so I thought it was an engine, but I didn't know. <laughs> Stop it! You called us. You were the first person on the line. Yes. So the bishop contest going pretty well, huh? <laughs> women, women can just be a lot of headache, aren't they? You're on the air. <laughs> this is what we asked for, right? You know, hello. <laughs> when are we going to get married? Are you kidding? I'm loving this bishop <laughs> contest. <laughs> to make it fair, everybody else's mom should be on. Right. You, think I'd want this, you think I'd want this any other way? I don't think it would turn out any other way. You're on the air. Hello? Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? How are you? I'm good. Good. Oh, oh hold on. I'm at the Burger King. Oh, days. <laughs> So how's it going? Can you get me some French toast sticks? <laughs> yeah, I can. Go ahead. But you'll have to come and get them. Um, I just wanted to make a comment. Yes. I think the star sounds like a very big, stuck-up mom. Mm-hmm. And I hope she loses. Oh. Because... All right, we'll put you down as a maybe. <laughs> <laughs> All that and the Burger King. Driver. And how about an opinion from one of the highest ranking officials on this program? Now, oh. Representing butt rockers worldwide. <laughs> Carrying sod from Tacoma to Everett and every city in between. President of the Blue Collar Workers. Even though he wears a tank top, here's Dump Truck Guy. Oh. <laughs> What the hell's going on, baby? <laughs> now, WS met Star's mom. We all love Star's mom. We all feel like uh, she's a mom to us all in some sense. Yes, indeed. I've well, even given her a big hug once or twice. Yes. Mm. Every time you see Star's mom, you can't help but give her a big hug. Right. That's right. Well, hey, man, I think, I think uh, tomorrow when you announce who the winner is, yes. you should have all the ladies down in the studio and have a cage match. <laughs> <laughs> I will take off work and I will be there. <laughs> I would not miss that for the world. Pay-per-view. Now, have you jumped online to cast your vote yet, Dubby? Not yet. I was checking it out last night. I just wanted to hear what the results of today was. Now, now I can make my final, my final vote. Yeah. Well, I got my final vote. See, a lot of votes have yet to be tabulated. A lot of votes have yet to come in. Right. Some vote early, some vote late. Dump Truck Guy's vote has yet to be cast. I knew there would be Tepper's flight, man. I just wanted to find out the outcome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love it. Thank you, Debbie. Better than the freaking Bachelor. Take care. <laughs> oh, Better than The Bachelor? What? From Heaven, heaven for, for bed. <laughs> he loves The Bachelor. <laughs> he does. We've had tears. Yeah. We've had anger. Boy. We've had it all. <laughs> The T-Man. So what I'm going to do is piss and moan like an impotent jerk and then bend over and take it up the tailpipe. You're listening to The T-Man Show on Seattle's number one hit music station. Cube 93. From what I understand, from what Jimmy Fred Weeman is telling me, perhaps the sympathy vote based on Star's mom's appearance on the program, is having some impact on the voting. Ooh. Mm. Oh. Have you checked the voting recently, Stephen? I haven't seen it recently, no. Uh, Jimmy Fred, do you want to give us an old, updated voting tally, if you will? Yes, Steve, man. Go uh, ahead. In, in first place is Bitchler number one. Constance. Wait, wait, hang on. Don't give it to us just yet. <laughs> okay, now go ahead. <laughs> Why don't I start from the bottom? <clears throat> yes, that's better. In fourth place is Bitchler number two, Megan, with 6% of the votes. She's gotten killed on the fact that no one can really see her picture very well. Go ahead. In uh, third place is uh, Bitchler number three, Amber, with 30% of the votes. Star has moved up to second place with 31% of the votes. Wow. And Constance is in first with 32% of the votes. Ooh, so, wow. star, so Star is only one percentage point now. That is correct. 20 minutes ago, she is... What, eight percentage points behind Constance? Yes. Star's mom comes on bawling. And now, unlike what uh, one caller predicted, she's moving up. Yeah, I thought it would have backfired, too. In the yeah. voting tally. Maybe the sympathy vote is the first to come in. I don't know. But that's your latest voting tally. This is really getting interesting. Mm hmm So you'll be happy to know, Star's mom. Are you still there? Yeah. <laughs> Don't sound any happier. What's wrong? Well, obviously, my daughter's in Oh, pet. all right. Yes. Uh, we, we've been to the Star's mom. Your daughter is uh, on the verge of passing the first place woman and going uh, into the top spot. you got to be happy about this. I hope so. Ah. 
Mm-hmm. She's a wonderful girl. Everybody loves her. Maybe it was a good strategy that was uh, something that we couldn't have even factored in. Stars Mob is getting the sympathy vote. Yeah. A lot of people are calling saying, can we bear, ban Stars Mom for life from the program? <laughs> <laughs> that's another thing. <laughs> Stars Mom. Yeah. Have a good day. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. You're going to be okay? Yeah. Anything you want to add? I wish listeners see my daughter's sweet place. Okay. Okay, bye. Who loves you, Star's mom? Yeah, we, I love you, too. All right. Bye. <laughs> Star's mom, Terry. Yes. She's Star. having a tough morning, an emotional morning. Yes. Do you like Star's mom? Obviously, in the heat of battle. Ah! <laughs> love Star's mom. Obviously, in the heat of battle, Terry, yeah. emotions run high. Obviously. Not only for the ladies involved, but their mothers. You're right. <laughs> now, waiting outside... <sighs> Remember yesterday we talked about a story about a 17-year-old boy who uh, got a note from his teacher that uh, gave evidence to an ongoing affair he was having with a high school teacher, the French teacher, 31 years of age. And the note said, my husband's last day out of town is today. we got to make something happen quick. That's the piece of evidence they had. And based on that evidence, I said, well, why can't they make a charge already so we can find out what this lady looks like? I can't wait to see what this 31-year-old French teacher looks like, even though I know that she's probably not that good looking. Mm Mm-hmm. And I said, somebody out there has to have a picture. Right. Well, outside our door is a woman. (laughs) A woman whose daughter went to the homecoming dance with the 17-year-old who supposedly had sex with the French teacher. Oh, no. Yeah. And she has the high school yearbook. And she said her daughter's pissed that she's here. But she's here anyway. And she's outside the door. And she's ready to bring in the yearbook so I can see what this woman looks like already. Because I can't wait for the police to get together enough evidence for them to post her picture on the news. Right. I want to see it right now. (laughs) So go outside and get that one, would you please? Oh, goody. (sighs) The meantime, Terry. Yes. Give me a quick story. What do you got? A uh, Connecticut newspaper is reporting that a 75-year-old man impregnated a 10-year-old girl. Yeah, that's nice to hear. Now, of course, he's in jail. She has had his child, as a matter of fact. So, obviously, that's all the evidence you need to right. uh, determine that sex did transpire here, or else I wouldn't believe it. Right. 75-year-old men. Did you see how Viagra has changed the world, <laughs> Terry? <laughs> 75-year-old men have become very dangerous. Yes, very I mean, much do you so. even Obviously, it's statutory rape, but do you even try to claim as a 75-year-old that it was consensual sex? Does a 10-year-old give herself over for consensual sex to a 75-year-old tripled-up guy? Well, that is his claim, that it was consensual. He's saying it was consensual. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she really wanted me. <laughs> <laughs> I turned her on. It was that mature factor that I have. Right. Jeez. Unbelievable. We're watching Matlock together. Just got her going. Please step over to that microphone, if you will. Good morning. How are you? You are a hot mom. I like it. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and your daughter is unhappy that you came down. Is that what I heard? Step forward, if you can. Slide yourself in there on the chair. Yes, she's a little unhappy. Hmm? She's a little unhappy. She's yes. a star's mom. No one could be worse. <clears throat> Terry's reading a story. Where'd you get that story, by the way, Terry? Where's that story coming from? Uh, from ctnow.com. It's Connecticut. Connecticut Now? Yeah. A com- Connecticut publication? Yes. And what city did it happen in? I went to college in Connecticut. Bridgeport. Half hour away from where I went to college. What? Minute Bowl went to college there. Wow. <laughs> at Bridgeport. <laughs> and a 10-year-old girl gets impregnated by a 75-year-old guy. Yes. If 10-year-olds are giving themselves over for consensual sex, man, that puts a whole new spin on a uh, new line of contraception that may have to come out. They may have to come out with a SpongeBob. Uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> sponge. come on now. The SpongeBob sponge. <laughs> SpongeBob sponge. For, their, for your 10-year-olds that may be a little too risque. A Nerf diaphragm. <laughs> <laughs> See, don't let the kids kiss. How old is your daughter? My daughter will be 17 in March. 17 in March. Yes. And she went to the homecoming dance with the boy in question, I'm the young sure man. I'm not sure which dance it was, but, but a one dance. of them. A dance. And you have the high school yearbook, because I couldn't wait. It's. She actually teaches at the, right. uh, junior high. Mm-hmm. And you are sure that this is the woman, because that's the word on the street. Yeah, well... And, and when I see, when they finally do gather enough evidence to uh, post uh, her picture, because she's been charged... Then I'll see this very same woman, and I'll probably see this very same picture because they usually use a high school yearbook picture. Please hand over the yearbook if you want. I, I love looking will. at the high school yearbook. Yeah, no one would sign mine. Uh, <laughs> Read some of this stuff. Up uh, on top, where, second where would row. she be? Up on top, she was, she, second row. Second row. Yes. Which one? Well, I. Can you count over? Can you count from the left? Let me see. Oh, let second, me see. Let me see. All right, wait a no, minute. No. Uh, I kind of put an arrow there. Oh well, yeah, second I see, to the last I, I one. The I, I got it. Yeah, there. Oh oh yeah. All right. 
right? Is that right? Mm. Not quite as bad as I uh, pictured, but those who had the over half dollar, those who had the over half dollar, I'm sorry you lose. Oh. <laughs> ah. I she, agree. Yeah, she is about a half dollar, maybe leaning upwards to a daddy done good. Then for... we win. No! You had to hit half dollar smack, I mean, uh, daddy done good smack dab if you're to win. All I'll call right. it a push. She looks like she has a decent enough body. She's got like a psychopath's haircut. <laughs> and, uh, all right. It's all short and like prison like. Well, prison-like. can I mention which subject she teaches? We already know. She teaches French okay. according to the See, news story. That's what yeah. I'm thinking. That's probably how she. The news story, yeah. You know, when you start talking like yes. that, I think that's how she pulled them in, maybe. Oh, really? I don't know. Oui, oui, oui. <laughs> yeah. yeah. See? <laughs> Works for me. Mm-hmm. So are you... Uh, oh, let me see. That's oh, that, him. Okay, yeah. That's your daughter with him <laughs> yes, at the dance. My daughter... Um, What's with these backgrounds they put for terrible high man. school juniors to take pictures in front of? Look at that. It's like the side of Cheech and Chong's van that's right. like been airbrushed. Like we really think they're, <laughs> at, they're in the middle of a meadow here? <laughs> yeah, right. But it's my requirement to bring this up, she said I had to bring a more recent picture of her. Oh, which oh, one is she's your daughter? She's on the left. Yes, she is. Hey, <laughs> you got a tall daughter. You're not. She's that actually tall. not that tall. As her friends are actually shorter. Yeah. than her so. friends are pretty hot too. <laughs> Aren't they cute? <laughs> yes. Maybe we'll go next time. You have a very good-looking family, I imagine. It's just you're her a, and I. You're a good-looking, uh, fun mom, I imagine too. Uh, yeah. You're a married woman. So. I'm divorced. Oh. Yeah. Stumped wow. him twelve years ago. Mm-hmm. You didn't apply to be the bitch. Well, you know, actually, my roommate mentioned something of it, but right. I said no. I'm, I see. You're staying on your own I'm right pretty now. sure I'm thinking you probably want a little bit younger than Well, you never I. know. All ages, all ranges work with us. <laughs> so do you have a boyfriend or what? Not at the current time. Oh, you're very single. Very single. So you should have been a part of, well, there'll be other things we do. Maybe I'll tell she's you what, not a bitch. Just for coming down and bringing this bit of uh, information from me and letting me view this picture that I was dying to see, I will give you an invite to the T-Man's in-studio Christmas party that, if that's you. something you wish to come to. I would love You'll to You'll meet come. a lot of interesting people there, I'm sure. Yeah, trust us. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mom. Thank you very the daughter nice with the yearbook you. for coming down. Take care. We appreciate that. In your heart. Oh, you know he's right. The T-Man Show. You're listening to the best of T-Man. The T-Man will be back on live in no time. Now more of the best of T-Man. The New York Times is taking a swing at Tiger Woods. Today's editorial in the Times says Woods should not play in next year's Masters Golf Championship at Augusta because that golf club is for men only and it does not allow women to join. Right. Woods has said the club has a right to set up its membership oh. however it wants. And that brings us to tonight's question of the night. Is Tiger Woods an asshole? <laughs> <laughs> I think. Uh, Can I vote? This, oh, wow. has been, this has been something that has been the way it's been for what? How many years has the Masters been ongoing? Women's rights, the bra burning, took place decades ago. Why now? In 2002, do they finally muster up the effort, the courage? All of a sudden, they're so gung-ho with the picketing potential and all this other stuff about the freaking masters. And Tiger Woods is left as the guy who's hanging in the balance. <laughs> yes, he has the... They would certainly... If he made the strong statement, I will not play until you allow women to participate in your club at Augusta, they would change their rules because Tiger has that much power. Mm-hmm. But why should they have to? They're not his people. Right. <laughs> his people are doing fine at the Masters, <laughs> represented by him. Right. <laughs> I have not a vagina. <laughs> Fend for yourselves. That's right. Oh, boy. A lot of pressure on Tiger. Yes. Now the women so. are going to come after him. Well. But he's right. He 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 should make some kind of statement about it. He's right, but if the case were that, and it still is, I imagine, at a lot of clubs in the uh, well, the, the southern states, right. that right. they may not allow black people to participate. Uh, yes. That would be more of a cause that would hit close to home, and uh, that would probably rub him the wrong way, as it should. But, but women, we don't really care. Well, <laughs> yeah, that's still, what he's saying. But, but still, in, in for the sport in general, mm-hmm. I think that he should make some sort of statement. And well, he did. He said they have a right to do their own rules. 
But he, he's got to make a, a, more of a stand than just that, I think. You're out of the air. You want to make a comment about Tiger? Tiger is an idiot. Oh, man. wow. Plain and simple. Tiger is an idiot. Hey, if he thinks back to a few years ago when he first wore his first green jacket and then he gets to pick what they're going to have for dinner the next year after after the, uh, the PGA Tour... The, the, the other golfer made the comment, I guess we'll be having collard greens and fried chicken next year. Fuzzy Zeller, yes. Exactly. Remember that? So he needs to pull his million-dollar head out of his butt oh. and take a look in the mirror and remember just exactly what color his skin is. Because it wasn't but a few decades ago, he would have been pulling golf carts instead of riding in golf oh. carts. Wow. <laughs> so Tiger what has... what happens when people get money, team in, they forget where they come from, they forget where they live, and all of a sudden they assume that they're... They're assimilated into the we crowd, and he's not. Tiger Woods has a responsibility, and it is his. Uh, is it's incumbent upon him to make a statement here, and he should do exactly what the New York Times suggests he should do. He should sit back, take a good look at himself, and say, "I'm sorry. What the hell was I thinking? My parents taught me better." Mm-hmm. So if his new song "Tiger from the Block" comes out, don't buy it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, D-Man. All right, sir. Good, <laughs> good thoughts. So people are yes. more passionate than I guess uh, we are here. Mm-hmm. I don't care either way. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime they can make a stink at a golf tournament, it's good for me. In, yeah, a, lot, in a lot of issues, I'm pretty much, I don't, I'm a kind of don't give a crap kind of guy. Well, it's just women, right? Right. Oh, <laughs> I kind of like all the hubbub. <laughs> if Tiger Woods, yes, says I'm out, then that will end all this fun. Right, right. I like the controversy. Tiger Woods does hold the power. All he has to say is uh, one morning he wakes up over the next couple of days. Yep, changed my mind. Not going to play. All right, women, come on in. Well, and the thing is, if it would, like, let's say his mother was playing golf and they said, no, you know that he would come to his mother's aid and say, oh, wait a minute, you know, make some kind of stand. So right. it is an equality thing, and, and the caller made some good points. Yes. To think that uh, they don't allow women, and I don't see any true reason why women shouldn't be allowed into this this little club. To think that they don't allow these women in is kind of archaic and ridiculous. Yes. But still, I don't really care. <laughs> I don't have enough money to build another locker room. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Whatever, man. You use too many paper products, man. They got a budget. <laughs> now, you have some stories left over, Terry? Yes, what do you have I there? Do. What do you got? Oh, in North Carolina. I'm still I'm still staring at this, uh, this dude yes. in the high school picture. At, I guess it was a homecoming dance, the dude who slept with the French teacher. Right. This dude didn't look that much different than I looked in high school. I mean, the only difference is I guess he's filled out more. Well. I was a string bean. <laughs> I was Ribby Robbie. <laughs> what is that name? Who gave you that? His face is all pimply. Like a typical kid Like in a high typical 17-year-old. Yes. And he's screwing French teachers. And actually, the and we made a copy of the yearbook before uh, the mom left. Believe me, we're not letting her get away without our <laughs> ability to look and relook. Uh, all the teachers, the thing I'm noticing here is the youthfulness of the teachers. I mean, I didn't have that many teachers that I could choose to lust after right. in high school because most of them were old bags. <laughs> and I'm looking, at, right. I'm looking at just this page that we made a copy of of the yearbook, and this must be a large quantity of the staff there at this particular high school, which is, I guess, where it's in this uh, picture here. Uh, Curtis High School, whoever mm-hmm. knows that. All the teachers are pretty young. Yeah, except I noticed this, that as well. Except this guy with the patch here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he's young, but the Ahoy matey thing is really... <laughs> well, come on now. And it's a youthfulness. Uh, Lucky for them, he's the traffic safety teacher. Right! <laughs> uh, this French teacher, by the way, is about... I also forgot that she was 31 years old. She looks older than that. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you that. <laughs> she's 31 years old, according to the story we heard. Right. And she's about, as I was about to say, uh, the 10th hottest that I see. There were like nine teachers just on this page. Right. That if he hooked up with, you even go just diagonal here, one spot, <laughs> and he hooks up with a much hotter woman. Go across right here. One, one movement, one picture to the right is a much hotter teacher. Well, maybe that she was going through a few things and, you know. Maybe yeah. the other teachers Insecur- aren't putting out, yeah. though. Insecurity yeah. things. What? So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and husbands. Uh, yeah. mm-hmm. Loyalty to their husbands. Right. Not attracted and turned on by a hot 17-year-old uh, male student in their minds. This is not a, like what any woman would decree as the hottest dude in the school. No. If you're deciding giving over your vagina in an uh, extramarital fashion to a 17-year-old and you're adding that risk to your life, you think you're going for the for the quarterback or something. <laughs> Jeez, nice. 
I mean, he's not, he's not a bad-looking guy at all. Right, right. But he just, I don't know, he's any old dweeb. Well, he gave her the right kind of attention, Is so that right? on and so forth. Is that all it took? <laughs> Terry, you think it's that easy? Well... You know how much attention I gave these teachers that I wanted? <laughs> Miss Lenane, I sat in her office all the time. And Miss Lenane said no. You just never connected with her. <laughs> right. <laughs> you never got slipped the note. <laughs> You're on the air. Yeah, I wanted to make a comment about Tiger Woods, man. He is not holding it down mm-hmm. at all. I am pissed off at this brother because he's already de- denied the fact that he's a black man. Period, point blank. He says, I'm not black and I'm not this. I'm like, whatever. Whenever these cats look at you, all these little racist cats that play, you're playing golf with now and they're like liking you because you're making them money, when they when you stop making them money, you're going to go back to being the N-word again. See, I didn't sense a lot of these uh, men calling in would be this passionate about this subject that is a subject about women. No. But I guess it runs a lot deeper than that. Right. It runs Absolutely. towards a sense of loyalty. It runs towards a sense of self and all that stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Well, what, basically what it boils down to is that, well, I'm a black man. And it, when you've been oppressed, and you, you, you feel... You feel because you know you don't know what it's like because I'm from the south. I All right, let me put like on a, let me on. put on a contrary and opinion to yours, okay, sir? Maybe we'll have a little bit of a debate here. You're on the air. How you doing? Good. Anchorage. Uh, what do you have to say? I am sick and tired of this crap. If Tiger Woods, if Tiger Woods doesn't want to play, fine. If he wants to play, fine. If he doesn't play, he'll just be throwing away the money. Because he's going to win the, the Masters again because he's got that course. So Tiger Woods has a responsibility to himself to make as much money as possible so he can help the issues and the causes that he feels and deems appropriate. Maybe Tiger Woods wants to accumulate so much money that he can give towards causes that he cares about a little bit more than he cares about this woman joining the Augusta, Georgia club thing. Does that make sense to you, caller, here in Seattle? No, that, that, that doesn't make any sense because... What, what, what are you trying to say? What, Martin Luther King <laughs> took a paycheck instead of marching? Come on, man. You're gonna, that's selling out. That's why. That's what sell man? out. Sell out. Take the oh, money look, and look. don't give a damn about anybody else. Man, come on. You look, can't do that. It's not about that. That's what it is. That's exactly what it is. Take the paycheck and don't give a damn about anybody else. It's that whole capitalist mind frame. And as long as you're going to oh, think like that, that people are always going to get crapped on by people like you. Oh, and capitalism is bad, huh? Yeah. I suppose your life is worse now than it was would have been, oh, I don't know, 300 years ago. You know what? It's a lot worse now because, you know what, at least I knew exactly who hated me and why they hated me. Now I don't know. So when I go in to get a job, I, I never know. I have to always have to, I have to put on this special face. At least before I could, at least it's just been myself. Now Nobody I have to hates, act. Nobody hates you but you, okay? Oh. This is America, man. You can do whatever you want to do. You, yeah, you're right. This is America. You can't do whatever you want to do. But sometimes hating sure other can. people, discriminating against other people, I don't think that's right. Apparently, you can't sometimes be. Sometimes freedom. Sometimes, if you give an idiot freedom, an idiot will do idiotic things. Why is discrimination wrong? I discriminate every day about which shirt I want to wear. Uh, which yeah, but you I know what? You're, you're not hurting your shirt's feelings. Come on, dude. Don't compare us to a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> it's the American and Lula. <laughs> Starring <laughs> the American and Lula. <laughs> yes. People are fired up about this. Yes, yeah, they man. are. I thought it was about women, too, man. <laughs> This deep. runs deeper than we imagined. Exactly. It's unfortunate it's for Tiger that he has to be the spokesperson for this because, you know, Vijay Singh's from Fiji. You know, he's not white. Maybe they should ask him, too, and take some pressure off Tiger. I think there is knows, something Tiger. to be said about a man having an opportunity to make his money and then having the ability to give to causes that may be a little bit more closer to home mm-hmm. than Tiger feels towards these ladies who uh, may or may not have the greatest case or cause in his mind. <laughs> You're on the air. You compared to his shirts, man. Hello? <laughs> T-Man? Yes. Hey, man, I, I, I don't know what the hell is going on with this. Right. Now, the only reason this is even a big deal is because he's a black man, so that means he has to stand up for every cause someone else believes in? Come on, now. 
The Stiawoods have to make a stand on every cause of every potential discrimination situation in the world that uh, he can impact. I think the reason why, you know, people feel this way that he should is because, he you should know, understand he should a understand. little bit about discrimination, right. a little bit about right. exclusivity, right. a little bit about how it feels to be on the other side of the right. fence, if you will. And he doesn't seem like at all that he's remotely understanding when he makes a statement like, well, they can choose who they want to choose to be a part. Right. Of their club. Right. Now, but why shouldn't they be able to choose that? I mean, I'm a black man. I'll tell you, if I'm going somewhere, I'm going to a club or whatever that's predominantly white. They don't want blacks there. I'm not trying to push to get in there. I'm going somewhere where I'm comfortable. Hmm? So I you guess know? there are varying opinions right. of all kinds this morning. And this is a very uh, interesting issue, there's no doubt. Mm -hmm. But they're trying to say Tiger shouldn't have his own opinion because he's a black man. He still needs to make up his own mind. It don't matter what And it sounds he like supports. he's made up his mind and he's not wavering as of yet. Right. I mean, if he were to come out now and say, uh, change my mind, <laughs> wouldn't that be ingenuine? Exactly. What, what, would he be any, any better for supporting a cause that he isn't passionate about? Mm hmm? Martin Luther King chose his battles. He chose his causes. Tiger's just a great golfer. Exactly. He has the right to make his money and support the causes that he believes in. Now, because of his abilities, there's a lot of responsibility, unfairly or fairly, whatever you choose, placed on Tiger. And there is a lot in this case. But he never asked for it. Right. Martin Luther King made choices. Exactly. Great choices. But Tiger Woods is not Martin Luther King. And Martin Luther King is not uh, able to pick up a golf club and score uh, 68 on a par 74. Right. Exactly. And all these other black people that are going to call and say he needs to do this because he's black, that's just a form of putting us in our place, too. We shouldn't have to do anything because we're black. He can go out and play his golf. Making comparisons between Tiger Woods and Martin Luther King are unfair. Exactly. To Tiger. Now, with that said, <laughs> yes. if I were Tiger, I would probably do the opposite. But if that's not Tiger. Right. Right. So everyone shut up! <laughs> <laughs> You'd be like, yeah, it'd be nice to get some hot chicks out here on the court. Well, and, and some here, people... drive that cart, baby. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> and some people might, might take a stand and say, well, then, you know, if it's going to be like this, then why not we pull together and have a, a course that's pr just for the women, right. that kind of thing. Terry, yeah. Star's mom is on the hotline. She's Again? crying because people are uh, being mean to Tiger. Oh, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's not a hoe. <laughs> Tiger is not a hoe, despite what Constance says. <laughs> Wait a minute. Yes, Give me an updated vote tally, if you will. It's a tie. Tie? It's tie. With who? It's between uh, Bitchler number one, Constance. Yes. And we also have a Bitchler number four, Star. Both have 32% of the votes. Do you believe that? Wow. Star has moved up to tie herself for first place. Gee. First place for Star. What percentage do they have? 32% uh, each. And where's Amber? Amber is uh, right behind them with 30%. And where's Megan? She's got 6%. Six percent. Six percent. Oh, come on, ouch. guys. Trust me on this one. <laughs> By the way, yes. Yeah, yeah you really, and your eight-mile school cap. Talk about power. <laughs> uh, obviously, Hotshot has uh, none. Right. <laughs> right. I'm never going to get into her club now. Hotshot went on the air after Megan Boy. was in the studio saying she was the hottest girl he's ever seen in person. In his life. In his life. Yes. And she has six percent of the vote. <laughs> That's a bad picture, man. See? Trust me, guys. I'm right on this. Well, you have a better shot with her now. Have no shot to begin with, Stephen. All right, doesn't matter. Women, women have a better chance of getting into Augustus Club. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> true. Than, than Megan rallying from behind at this point oh, and winning this whole thing, Hot Shot. You have no ability to persuade. I'm no Martin Luther King and I'm no Tiger. Oh! I got no, no pull anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> no one listens to me. Oh. Hey, you want to wrap it up with a couple of quick stories? What do you got there? What do you got? Go, go. Seven football players were arrested in North Carolina for a little hazing incident on a freshman player. Uh, they rode on his rear end with a Sharpie and then proceeded to sexually assault him with it. See, I blame Terrell Owens for this. Oh, the yeah. Sharpie thing. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. That's nice. Uh-huh. What else? Also, check this out. One in three people, T-Man, have sent text messages to the wrong person and have gotten themselves in a little bit of trouble. Yes, <laughs> we've all done that. I'm surprised it's only one in three. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Don't ever start sending messages or emails or two-way pages to two different people when you're a little bit liquored up. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ever do that. Trust me. You'll be having a normal conversation with one of the people and a real sexual innuendo conversation with another, and then you'll screw it up. <laughs>
And, 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 and there's been times where I've emailed you things, and you've emailed me, emailed me back, and we've all emailed about uh, complaining about the women. Yeah. <laughs> then all of a sudden I get a page from Jimmy Fred saying, was this meant for me? Yeah. <laughs> oops. And I'd send back, oops. <laughs> so hemmed up, you got no, no excuse. Right. <laughs> When you say the women as a pile, it's really hard to, yeah. Yeah, to you know, interpret that differently. Well, it could be for him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. That is so wrong. It's happened, Terry. Oh, my I understand. You're a man. My God. You're completely pussy whipped. Yeah, you can pay.